Aguten Vach and Bruchem Abayim, welcome to the international Fabrengen in which Chsidim, Shluchim, Anash, and all of Kla Yisrael are uniting tonight for the next 24 hours to charge ourselves up and rededicate every part of our lives to hear and internalize the Rebbe's call on the day of Chav Chasnissen where the Rebbe empowered each and every one of us to see ourselves as key players in bringing about Gilu Mashiach, the Geula Amitiz Vashlema. It's Matsoy Shab is customary to start with the Chassid Shemaisa. The Chassid, the great Chassid of Tzvi Desner, who was a Chassid of the Alter Rebbe, came to Liadi and he went into Yechidis to the Alter Rebbe. And it was a lengthy Yechidis during which the Alter Rebbe walked out for a few moments and he noticed on the desk of the Alter Rebbe the clock was a bit off. He looked at his wrist, wristwatch and it wasn't accurate. His wristwatch was set on the watchtower in the center of Petterburg, and the clock in the Alter Rebbe's desk wasn't the accurate time. He was kind enough to switch and change the time on the Alter Rebbe's desk. Shortly thereafter, the Alter Rebbe came back into the room and noticed the clock. It was off. And the Alter Rebbe looked up at the chassid and said, the clock at my desk is set at the Tzirufei Shem Havaya, the way it is in heaven. And that is the accurate time. When we live throughout our day-to-day -day experiences, there are times that we can get distracted. We can set our clock, set the state of being, our state of minds, as indicated by the watchtower in the center of our city, whether it's Times Square, Trafalgar Square, Eiffel Tower, ben, Big Ben in, 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 in England, whatever it is, that may set our, define our reality. Today is the time when we all look at our watches and we make sure that our clocks are in tune with the clock on the Rebbe's desk. The clock on the Rebbe's desk clicks, ticks. It's a moment closer to Yulia Mashiach. He gives man Laschem and every minute it only re- it charges it stronger and stronger because it is a minute closer to Gilead Mashiach. And this is the purpose of tonight's Fabrengen, that we strengthen ourselves, not only to set our own individual clocks, but recognize that Rebbe charged us with the responsibility to make sure that the clock in Times Square will reflect the clock on the Rebbe's desk. The clock in the watchtower in every corner of the world will ring the same tune, the tune that is Geula is real and it's here and it's now. We begin this Fabrengen with hearing the words of the Rebbe, directly in which the Rebbe set the tone for our mission, the call of the hour. We will now hear the Sikh of Chavches Nisim. <laughs> Wir kommen das hat sich klar gesagt, zusammen zählen, nicht zusammen und das gucken wir ab. Der alle Inyonen wird noch nicht darauf gebracht, marschieren. Ich habe dauer, ich habe viel, eigene Mühen, klar und klar. Und dann noch, ich will kommen zu gehen und Luft zu machen, ich will noch eine Scheibe, ich will noch ein Jahr bringen, wenn wir das noch einmal was schreiben, dann noch ich muss sagen, was mit ihm. Gegen das Halten und Gedenken, was sie verschrieben geworden und der Beibel bleibt so, und auch Mondel ist lang, sie ist auch recht, also ein Bernard soll noch nicht kommen, Moschiach, und sie recht, also ich morgen, bin, morgen soll noch nicht kommen, Moschiach, und lieber morgen soll nicht kommen, Moschiach, und ich habe Schreitag und ich habe so schreien, als muss ich. Hulu, immer wohl geschrieben mit seinem Namen, ist wohl gemeint mit seinem Namen, ist eine sichere Sache, als Moschich wohl schon lange gekommen, zusammen mit der Gula Amitis war schlimmer. Was ich kann noch tun, und du weißt es nicht. Warum alles, was ich so getan habe, bis jetzt, weil der Herr, weil der Rieck, sie gar nicht mit der Rieser vor mir geblieben in Golos, und was noch mehr, weil mir geblieben mit der Gol in den Golos, ich bin nicht mehr ich bin nicht mehr ich bin nicht mehr ich 
Aber den die Tichon, und wir hier lassen nach Sorkow, Sorkow, und wir finden zwei Lieder, was wir uns auch einmachen, und wir sagen, dass sie muss nicht sein. Bei den Nebischen ist das, dass der Mut ist, das Amt schäre zu. Wir sollen lachen zu lachen, wenn er nur hat, dass er nur noch ein Ton ist, eine sichere Sache, die Nebischen wird darauf bringen, der Gulle hat mit, es war schlimmer, denke ich, um mich hat Mammos, und auf dem Meiser, was sich kommt, noch schon in dem, auf zu geben, machen jeden von euch auf ein Schmier, auf die Sache, und wir hier lassen, aber wir gehen auf die Sache, und auf die Sache, und wir gehen 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 auf die During the next 24 hours, we are privileged by the efforts of America's 302, the great Achsani of tonight's Frabrengen, and the Mashiach office, who have put together a very, very rich program in the, very, in, in the, in the choice of Mechan Chemashpiyim and Rabbanim, who will address this Frabrengen. It would be worthwhile for everyone to keep a notepad near you. We will be hearing wonderful, wonderful ideas thoughts, inspiration, to jot down notes so that we can live it and really internalize it. We begin this grand 24-hour Fabrengen with being honored by one of the greatest speakers, educators, lecturers throughout the world, very well, well known amongst Anash, Arav Sheis Tau. Thank you, Rabbi Ginsberg. Um, it's, it's an honor to uh, be part of this 24-hour global Fabrengen again. And it's also an honor that uh, they gave me the, the opening spot. And I was told, I asked the organizers uh, how much of uh, last year's program was repeated. They said, no, 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 we tried to shake it up and do new things. The only two things that are the same from last year is Abby Ginsberg's the first MC and I'm the first speaker. So I guess we did okay. But I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna make it my goal that if I didn't say anything radical enough last week, last year to get me not invited back this year, I think I'm gonna try this year to say things radical enough that will get me not invited back next year. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that to be glib or funny or, or shocking. I'm saying that because, I mean, we just watched the video of the Rebbe speaking and the urgency and the, 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 the tone that this is something that is so desperately, critically necessary for us to step up and do. It's, it's, you watch it and you can't help but to shudder. And it, it's clear that Rebbe there is not asking for us to do the same old, same old. The Rebbe is asking, demanding, pleading, if we can say that. that we, we, we need to really do something difficult and new and innovative and, and daring and bold. So I'm going to try to set the tone. And I'm going to, at the risk of being a little bit too radical and at the risk of being not invited back, the risk of getting criticism, you know what? So be it, but I think we need to shake things up. So let me tell you my thoughts. It happens to be Bashkacha Pratis, and nothing just happens to be Bashkacha Pratis, that we're gathering today, and it's Aleph de Resh Chedish year. It's the first day of the two day Resh Chedish of year, which is. Uh, the anniversary of the Rebbe launching the 12 Psukim. The Rebbe rolled out the 12 Psukim at two occasions. The Fabrengen of Aleph the Resh Chedish year, that, with the year being Tov Shin Lamed Vov, 1976, the spring of 76. And then 18 days or 19 days later at the Lag Boimer rally. So the first six of the 12 Sukkim were 
brought out at the Fabreng and Aleph de Reish Chedesh year, this very day, this day in history. And then two and a half weeks later at the Lag Boimer rally, the, the, the Rebbe put out six more Pesukim. In fact, you can see pictures of that year's Lag Boimer rally. They only had posters for the first six Pesukim because they didn't know there were going to be more Pesukim. And uh, the format of the 12 Pesukim, the six and the six is the same. In the first six, you have, the reason you have six is you have two scriptural verses, meaning Pesukim of Tanakh. And then you have two Maimore Chazal sayings of, of Chazal, the sages. And then you have two lines from Tanya. And then in the second six, you have exactly the same structure. You have, again, two Pesukim of Tanakh. You have two Maimore Chazal. And you have two lines from Tanya. And the two lines from Tanya from the second group of six, which were, as I mentioned before, rolled out on Lag Boimer. So they're both from Perik Lamed Gimel, because as the Rebbe said, Lamed Gimel is Lag, is 33, is Lag Boimer. So I think every Lubavitcher knows what the 12 Sukkim are. But if you ask a Lubavitcher, what are these Psukim? Why did the Rebbe choose? these psukim? Why not other psukim? What makes these psukim the ones that the Rebbe wanted that we should teach to children? And I've actually asked people this question, and people will tell you, well, these are the Yisaitis of Yiddishkeit, or these, you know, the fundamental ideas, or like, like a Rambam's Yud Gimel Ikrim, so to speak. Um, but that's not what the Rebbe said, actually. That's not actually what the Rebbe said. The Rebbe actually, very actually consistent with the Rebbe's style, explained his methodology. The Rebbe was always explaining. The Rebbe could have said, this is my new initiative, and that would have been fine for Hasidim. But the Rebbe was always saying a milse time, always explaining. And when the 12 psukim came out, the Rebbe explained why these psukim were the 12 psukim. In fact, I'll say something to you that you probably will... Uh, I don't know, maybe it'll be shocking to you. The Rebbe said it could be these psukim or it could be other psukim. The Rebbe said it can ice climb and under the psukim. The Rebbe gave permission to the chassidim. If you don't want to use these psukim, you could choose other psukim as long as they have the same inhalt, as long as they have the same toichen. Meaning it wasn't the psukim, it wasn't the oisius, the words, it was the content, it was the message. Okay, now we're getting closer to what it really was about. What, what about the message? Why, why these 12 messages? Now we're realizing it's not just the words. It's not just the letters. It's, it's ideas. Okay, what about these 12 ideas? So the Rebbe said very clearly, the 12 sukkim was all part of a whole initiative that year in 1976 of chinuch, shnas ha and something very interesting that Rebbe said, which is a radical idea, absolutely radical, is that the idea of chinuch, or at least the Rebbe's idea of chinuch, is not that Mivtza chinuch, the, 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 the education campaign, is a campaign to educate children. It's not. What, what, what else could it be? But rather, said the Rebbe, it is a campaign to turn children into educators. Mitzah Chinuch is not a campaign to educate children. It's a campaign to turn children into educators. In fact, somebody, I don't know who it was, was uh, rubbed the wrong way by that. They thought that was just too out of the box. And they wrote to the Rebbe and said, uh, this, is, this is wild. This is wild stuff. And the Rebbe spoke about it at the Yud Beis Tamos Fabreng in that year. Okay, so we're talking about a few months after the Psukim were launched and somebody wrote to the Rebbe and said, where do you get this crazy idea of turning children, little babies, into the leaders, the influencers, the educators? Where, where do you get stuff? Well, you can't just make stuff up. So it, you, you can look at the, you can look at the Hanukkah from the Fabreng it's absolutely delicious. So the Rebbe, lays out the whole criticism. Somebody wrote to me, and this is what they said. And then the Rebbe said, essentially, I'm surprised this person was not aware of the precedent upon which the existence of our entire Torah has reached us today. 
The fact that we have Judaism today is only because of a story, the story told in the Gemara, in Baba Metziah, of Reb Chia. Kama Godo Maiser Reb Chia. How great was the act performed by Reb Chia? What did Reb Chia do? The Tana Reb Chia. That at a time when Taita was going to be forgotten, he got children together <laughs> and he taught one of five children, each one of the Chumash. And then he taught one of six children each, a Seder of Mishnayas. And then he made each one a master in their subject. You are the master of Seder Bereshis, and you're the master of Seder Zroyim. And each one of them mastered a Chumash or a Seder of Mishnah, and then they taught each other. And with this system and style being perpetuated exponentially, Rabbi Chia restored the entire Torah to Kali Yisrael. So the Rebbe said, you're asking me, where am I getting crazy new innovations like making children the educators of Kali Yisrael? We only have a Judaism today because children were the educators of Kali Yisrael. So the Rebbe said, the reason the 12 Sukkim were chosen, meaning on what basis were these Sukkim and Maimone Chazal and passages of Tanya chosen on the basis that these messages were deemed such messages that children would be able to understand well enough to teach. To teach. The entire purpose and the basis upon which the 12 Sukkim were chosen was that they were messages that the Rebbe deemed were ones that children could understand well enough to teach. The 12 sukkim were, call it an arsenal of weapons for children to bring out into a war of perfecting and, and purifying and making holy the entire world. I mean, this is before Tivas Hashem, so the military uh, marshal that I'm using is a, is a few years early. But think about it like this. These are the tools. The tools for what? The tools for what? For being educators. So the 12 Sukkim, the anniversary of which is right now, Aleph Derish Chedish was all about empowering even little children should be teachers and educators and influencers. Sounds so radical, but like everything with the Rebbe, the Rebbe is both completely radical and completely traditional at the same exact time. Just like this thing. It's nobody does it. Nobody even thinks to do it. When you say to do it, it makes everyone uncomfortable. But when they challenge you, you're like, look in the books. <laughs> Chia did this 2,000 years ago. This is the basis of all Yiddish game. Here's what I'm saying. You say, Chof Ches Nissen, the Rebbe was pleading with us, please, guys, a little initiative, a little... <sighs> Get motivated, like figure out why this is important to you. Come on, think, think, come up. The, the, the Rebbe said, maybe one or two will come up with an answer, figure it out. That wasn't out of the blue and it wasn't out of nowhere. The Rebbe was asking even that the little children should learn how to think for themselves and learn how to carry a message and communicate a message long before Chav Ches Nissen. It wasn't a surprise. It wasn't out of the blue. But what did the Rebbe get? And I want to be careful. I said I'm going to try to uh, be radical, but I don't want to be too radical. The Rebbe asked for 12 ideas that children could learn and internalize so deeply that they'd be able to teach them to their friends. In fact, the Rebbe there in the Fabrengen, paints a picture. The Rebbe can paint a picture, I'll tell you. The Rebbe paints a picture. Little children are playing with their friends and they've been learning these psukim and they're so inspired by the messages of these psukim. The children can't help, they can't hold themselves back, but to share the ideas with their friends as they're playing. That's, that was the picture that the Rebbe painted. That was the Rebbe's vision. That's what the Rebbe asked for. What did the Rebbe get? Memorization. Now, I'm not criticizing. It's holy. And you see it. That, uh, at the rallies, the Rebbe said along. I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying it's interesting. When the Rebbe came out with the Psukim, he said you could even choose other words. It's not the words. You can always type 
You could choose other words. It's, I'm not married to the words. It's the messages. These messages were chosen because they're messages that children can't understand well enough to teach. So the Rebbe was asking for children to understand things so well that they could teach it and explain it and articulate it eloquently in a child's vocabulary in a child's style, obviously, appropriate to a child. But the Rebbe was asking that children should understand something so well, they should be able to explain it. That's what the Rebbe asked for. What did the Rebbe get? More memorization. More memorization. And he asked the child to tell you what the Pusik means, and he doesn't know. I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking us collectively. If we take it seriously, Mashiach, the Rebbe's call, that we need to shake something up, we need to do something new, we need to figure it out and get out of Golis already. Are we willing, are we willing to challenge certain institutional assumptions that we're comfortable with? Certain ideas about the way that children are educated by parents and by teachers, and I'm not bashing the system. I've been accused of being anti-system. Chas are not anti-system. There are, inc there are incredible maestas, and there are incredible educators, and, and, and menalim, and menahalois. There are incredible people who are involved in the education of our children. I don't want to, God forbid, to sound like I'm, like I'm bashing. What I'm saying is, if you're looking for a place where to be radical and innovative, let's look right under our nose, our children. Are we ready to be radical and innovative in their education and arm them and teach them how to think? You know, I just came out from a 30-day hachona for the Rebbe's birthday, for Yudalaf Nisim. Baruch Hashem, we did this 30 letters in 30 days. And every day we learned one of the letters from Igris Chelek Yud. And people were really, I'm talking about Chassidim, Spitz Chabad, like the Rebbe used to call them. They were asking me before it launched, they said, how, what are you gonna, how are you going to do 30 days of learning Igris. What do you, what, what do, you do? You just open Shalom of Rocha, Brooklyn, New York. Like, what, what are you reading? I said, what, what am I reading? You don't know how much depth, how much, how much scholarship, how much creativity, how much, uh, a totally different worldview, totally different worldview you can pick up from learning Igris. They're saying, no, I never heard of learning Igris. I don't know. You don't learn the Igris. Baruch Hashem, people learned with me for 30 days before you get off this, and you saw you learned the Igris. And I said time and time again that the point is not necessarily entirely what the Rebbe said. It's how the Rebbe said it. It's not what the Rebbe said. It's how the Rebbe said it. In other words, what the Rebbe said, that was to an individual. At that time, in that place, with those circumstances coming from that background, with their entire life story leading up to the moment in which they wrote to the Rebbe. So what the Rebbe said, maybe it's not a klal gola betoida. Maybe it's very specific. And the Rebbe actually says that many times in Igris, that there are no klalim when it comes to yonim nafshim, when it comes to personal issues, people, everyone's different. Everyone is a, is a unique creation of God. So it's not necessarily universal what the Rebbe said. But what's life-changing is to open yourself up to how the Rebbe said it. The, the, the whole Yelich, the Derech Halimud, you want to use a more Londish expression, the Derech Halimud. The Rebbe has a way of deconstructing a question. The Rebbe has a way of, of approaching a problem. The Rebbe has a way of putting people at ease. The Rebbe has a way of encouraging people. The Rebbe has a way of restoring people's hope. The Rebbe has a way of being an optimist and a realist at the exact same time. The Rebbe has a style. And it's not enough to just quote what words the Rebbe said. I'm not chas v'shalom, putting it down. Divri arav, the oisius, the holiness of the letters, the words, and, and, and learning chassidus bal peh. That's all important, incredibly important. But it's not enough because you're not going to figure out an answer how to do what the Rebbe is asking you to do. If all you can do, all you can do is repeat what the Rebbe already said. The Rebbe was begging us to be creative. That's when the Rebbe wanted the Ha'aris. The Rebbe would always ask for scholarly articles. After every Rashi Sikha, the Rebbe was looking, where are the Chassidim going to write up the articles? I gave them Klolim, Klolay Rashi. What do you think? A, a Rashi Sikh is the Rebbe showing off his lambdas to show off how the Lubavitcher Rebbe can learn, a, a, can learn a Rashi? The point was to give you tools. Now you learned the Rashi that I didn't teach. 
And it's not just with Chumash Rashi, it's with everything. It's with politics in the Middle East, and it's about Shalom Bayes, and it's about, uh, it, 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 it's about how to bring Mashiach. But what do we do? What do we do? Short answer tests that test children on retention, how much they can cram for a test, and how much they can regurgitate information. It's not enough that ever wants creative thinkers, innovative thinkers people who know not only what the Rebbe said, but can think how the Rebbe taught us how to think. You know, everyone did Pirkei Ovis today. It's a Dvar Mishnah. First Mishnah in Ovis. Says the Anshei Knesset Gdeila told us, Hamidu Talmidim Harbe. What's the Rebbe's diuk? Hamidu, stand up. Stand up. Lots of students. So the Rebbe said, Hamidu, stand them up. That means they can't just be people parroting what they heard from the Rav. They have to be creative. They have to know how to take it and run with it and to say something new and innovative. When the Rebbe is saying, don't just repeat what I told you to say. Say something new. Figure out something new. What does that mean? The Rebbe is standing us up to be creative and innovative, to take some initiative. One of the letters we learned, the 30 letters, someone wrote to the Rebbe and said, I want to get involved in Chabad activities. Tell me what to do. And the Rebbe told him, I don't know what to do. You Tell me what to do. I'm not there. You'll figure it out. Kabbalah soil is beautiful. Being a soldier is beautiful. The Rebbe wants both. <laughs> the Rebbe wants both. A yid is nimna amim nois. We can do both. But it's not enough just to be obedient. It's not just, not just the nasa. It's also the nishma. Which means we have to think like the Rebbe's chassidim. And we have to see things creatively. We have to see opportunities. And we have to do new things. And that's what the Rebbe was begging us to do, Chof Chesnissen. <laughs> the Rebbe spoke 40 years after Yud Shvat. But the Maimer Chazal, like Koi Inish Adaiti the Rebbe, Adar Boim Shnin. The Rebbe made a few diuk. One of them, the word Koi means to stand up, like we were saying before. Amido Talmidim Harbe. That what is the end game here? It's not just the Talmudim know what the Rebbe already said, but they absorb the Rebbe's approach so thoroughly that they're now standing. They're standing like competent thinkers who know how to figure out answers to questions that the Rebbe didn't explicitly give them. Everyone's struggling for guidance. What would the Rebbe say? What would the Rebbe say? There's so many new things since, since Gimel Thomas. What would the Rebbe say? The Rebbe didn't give enough of his holy time teaching us how to think. The Rebbe didn't give us enough tools to be able to figure things out. If it doesn't say it explicitly in the Sichas or in the Igris or the Maimorim, so use the tools, figure out the Rashi that the Rebbe didn't teach and figure out the answers to the questions, the burning questions of today that the Rebbe didn't tell us explicitly. That it gave, the Rebbe gave us a comprehensive worldview. What are we afraid of? That people will actually become independent thinkers? If that's what's holding up Mashiach, that we're afraid that people will think too much, be too creative, take too much initiative, show too much of their personalities, and we have to, we have to squash that? For what purpose? To retain the gullus and push off Geula? I said I'm not going to be too radical, but I'm going to push the line. I think it behooves all of us to be honest and to say, if this is what's holding it back, if this is the last thing that needs to be done, let's do it already. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Let's challenge some basic assumptions about how our children are educated. And by the way, I'm not anti-educator. You ask the educators themselves, the majority of them will agree with me and say, yes, 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 and yes. Yes, 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 and yes. We need children can think for themselves. I don't want to ever hear again somebody tell me that I learned how to think for myself by going to college. You don't know what a tragedy that is? Somebody who learns Chassidus Chabad, especially the Rebbe's Chassidus, which is so analytical and so layered, should master critical thinking. Should master critical thinking. Should be somebody who's creative and able to figure anything in the world out. Because the Rebbe's worldview is so comprehensive and so deep and so nuanced and so layered. A lot of people are going to come on tonight 
and they're going to say very inspirational things, much more inspirational than me. I'm not Mr. Inspiration. But if you're feeling inspired, what I want you to think about, maybe, maybe, maybe to consider where to channel that inspiration, do something radical with the education of your child so that your child can think originally and creatively and with nuance and, and be able to sustain contradiction and paradox in the way that the Rebbe taught us how to do it. Are we willing to try it? What are we risking? What are we afraid of risking? There's nothing, <laughs> there's no risk. We have nothing to lose and only everything to gain. God bless you and your children and the maestas and the teachers and the students and all of us. Let's make the Rebbe proud. Let's really, really show the Rebbe that we, we soaked in the Rebbe's teachings and we know how to think. We know how to think like the Rebbe's. I don't want to say tell me them, but the Rebbe's children. We know how to think like the Rebbe's children. Yashikeach, have a for your very powerful word said, it's clearly and will definitely have a powerful impact on all. We will now hear the Sikh of the Rebbe from Purim Toshim and Zayin, in which the Rebbe speaks very clear words how each and every one Bidirenu, and Noshim, Noshim Vitaf are charged and empowered with the ability, responsibility, and ability to bring about the Geula. Die Schwierigkeiten, was man heute Morgen gemacht hat, wo Nachfolgebegegnen sind, sind dann noch umgegangen, geht der Wind, dass die Gäste unterrücken, gedeht, er soll bleiben, aber soll das Schleien in La Delis Haboi machen. Steht das mit dem ganzen Teke? Wenn ihr die Verse noch, noch stören, dass ihr die Schallat muss. Wo die Frage hat, das wird sich wegen der Kerze von der Siederin. Und sind die einen Kerzen schon durchgegangen, das Händliche Leon. Und geht zurück, wo ich da fort habe, ist ein Bio. Das war der einzige Bio, was ich gefunden habe. Ein Jüster, das ein Scheich ist, von Hamas, die Huha Kehl. Darf das Sieber gehen zu Hakeel. Darf das Sieber geben zu jeder Rieden, wie von Herzen. Pschas, ich werde an Nossi, Hua, Kehl und alle sein, dann werden die Bibel gegeben für Kulu, hat nicht gekonnt, der Mütze jetzt zu sein. Und nachher, Piquet hat das nicht an Rock gebracht, den Pepeil. Befall, Pschas, ich gewonnen, die Rides an Delis. Ach, schon dort, bitt mich. Und zusammen mit der Mütze ist aber gewonnen, nennte, zu den Mütze und zu den Machischenen, weil mir war ich bei Ruch in Scheire, Ehre, in Sof und Drusche, Purim, Ich soll dämmelte geworden, noch mehr der Herrlich, aber man muss ihn drauf tun. Nur wenn der Miser, da habe ich schon so gut, wenn ich ihn drauf werde, soll ich nicht tun. Muss man mit Fassen sein, bei Jesse Reis, bei Jesse Reis. Als jeder Reis soll wissen, als durch sein ein und einziger Meister, und als sein ein und einziger Dieb, und als sein ein und einziger Machschauer, soll er wissen sein, als Rätsel, wenn ich wüsste, dem Schiche. Und in der Ruf Gufi, ich weiß nicht, die Mischiche. Und in der Ruf Gufi, dort der Psag Dien, von der wir in der Schule war, soll er bei ihm, und der Pfui noch noch zugekommen. Und der hat er dann gekonnt, jetzt zu sein, mit dem Business, in der Reino. Wir fragen doch, er hat es gegeben, mal Kerz. Wir fragen, bis das mal hat er gesehen, hat der Kerz von dem, Ich bin nicht durchgegangen, in Asir, in Bashoni, in Adover, Borur, in der einzige Sache, was mir darf machen sein, dass jeder Riesel soll wissen, dass es sein, in ihm, in Proti, auf mich kein sein, dass er die Allah in Lamba, mit mir hat mich kein Brille nicht, muss man halten in den Tumblen in den. Aber es soll wissen sein, wegen Kei-Zimmer, und es soll wissen sein, wegen Jemisa Moschia, und es soll wissen sein, dass alle Proti, was er, Und so wissen Sie, ein der Rieke, was er nicht da hinten versteht, mehr nicht ins Vorhin. Das meint man ihm und das meint man nie. Und das meint man anders, wenn wir noch in Bertag, bei jenem Nachhut, 
ali ću zamen kol godu. Chaim, Chaim, let's remember it's a Fabrengen. When Kulanu Ke'echad is an opportune time to ask for Barcheinu, Avinu, the Rebbe once said at the beginning of Fabrengen to include all of Klai Yisrael, that L'chol B'nei Yisrael Ye'er B'meshvesam. The Rebbe insists that in the final moments of Golis, by Mitzrayim, it was already L'chol B'nei Yisrael, so to now every Yid, Every home should be filled with air, gashmi, beruchni, bimili, mishalis, levav, kol echod, vechod, miyisrol, the tev of levrocha, the tev, hanirva, niglo, and the iker. We should all see, take from Yad Mamish, the geula, amitiz, vashleima, now. We're now privileged to hear from the manal of the uh, tzedaka of the rabbeim, manal of Kel Chabad, Rav, Reb Shalom, Duchman, who will join us now in this fabrengen. to the organizers for organizing this great thing. I know for me personally, this in itself, just in preparing for tonight, it gives us the opportunity to think about and to connect to this overwhelming time of Chavchas Nishan. And the simple question again is, so what's that the pshat? Yigidos Iber to Eich. What does that mean? The Rebbe gives it over to us. The Rebbe was a very, very uh, practical person, very optimistic, but nevertheless, very, very practical. And uh, he assesses the situation. He knows the situation. He knows about each one of us, where we are, what we are, from the Rebbe's perspective. And certainly from our perspective, the Yiddish Benafshe, where he is, what he is. And then we come along and we say, how do we approach it? What's the practical approach? And we're not just talking about the simple aspect of our life. We're talking about something that's central, the central theme, the central focus, the eyeball of chassidus, of creation, the nekudi ikris, the shiach. So really, how do, we, uh, how do we approach it? What's the approach? And in thinking about it, I thought that the Rebbe gave us the message right there himself. The Rebbe said, ich give the saich. If we connect, that the reason we're doing it is because the Rebbe gives it, because the Rebbe has the faith in us, because the Rebbe wants it, and of course the Rebbe is with us, and it's then we're going with the Kayach of the Rebbe, Ich gib the Saich, then to Yedn Einem, so then we can go along and, and then we can go along and we can take the challenge. Toshin Amitvav, I had the schus to be one of the Shruchim in Yisrael. And Chalameyat Pesach, I was in the home of the Bishra Leib of Rabbi Shalom in Kfar Chabad, and he got a telephone call from Rabbi Chadikov. And the telephone was that the Rebbe asked and gave over to the Bishra Leib of, the head of Tzach then, the head of the Shluchim then, that he should, there should be a big shturem in the Bishra about Tzudis Mashiach. And the Rebbe then spoke, and the Rebbe said, the Ushprach is the Zayn business of Klingen in the Gassen, Pameni Shom Mashiach. And two little ring in the streets, the bells of Mashiach. And the Rebbe then went on to him, the Rebbe told him that since there is the Shruchim there, we just came to the Sosla uh, two months before Pesach, we came to the Arab Shvat. And the Shruchim, the Rebbe says, were here last year by the Fabrengan of Dachin Shor Pesach. So Bamega, they should be in charge, they, they should be the head, because being that they were here by the Fabrengan here, so they know Sudas Mashiach, they understand Mashiach, their connection to Mashiach. I don't remember the exact language, but that, that was the point. The point was that the atmosphere of Mashiach, you were able to live if you were there by the Fabrengan of Dachin Shor Pesach. And yes, we were by the Fabrengan of Rachel Shapesach. And those of us who remember how the Rebbe inspired us, and when, when you were there by the Fabrengan, you push it, felt how the Rebbe is trying to lift us up, to inspire us, and to bring us into the taste of Mashiach. Of course, the question is that was then, how do we connect with it right now? We're after Gimel Thomas. And the Rebbe said that he gave us, gave, 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 gave us the remedy immediately. The Shabbos after, the Rebbe said that what he meant, how do we get in and how do we do it? Through winning the Tate of Mashiach, to winning the Gula. What the Tate of Mashiach, the Tate of Mashiach is. See, this is the Rebbe's Tate, that's the Tate of Mashiach. Connecting to the Rebbe, doing what the Rebbe wants. This is exactly how we connect. This is the inspiration. Ich gib the Saich. If we connect in the Eifel, if we take it from Ich gib the Saich, then we can do it. 
I heard the story from Rabbi Abba Refsu. Rabbi Abba Refsu told me that he heard the story from the Bala Maise himself. There was one of the Bachar in the 770, that was a Bachar, he was a very, very good Bachar, and then he got married, and then he was a, a little bit of a drop, he went, went off a drop, not, not in a major way. He was in the construction business. And for a few months, and he didn't come to 770, a few months he didn't come to the Rebbe. He felt being that he was in the construction business, he was dirty, so he didn't, he didn't feel comfortable to work at the 770. And he got once an urge that he wants to go into 770, he wants to go, he wants to see the Rebbe. So he decided he'll go, he'll stand by Mincha after the Rebbe went from his room, the Rebbe, from, from the Zal, the Rebbe went back to his room, he'll stand there in the back, there'll be people in front of him, people usually would line up to say goodbye, and he'd be able to see the Rebbe, and hopefully he didn't think he was hoping that the Rebbe would not see him. The Rebbe walked out from Mincha, and the Rebbe stopped, and the Rebbe asked, called him, the Rebbe says, Wo bist du? He didn't understand. So Rabbi Groner repeats them and says, the Rebbe, Frank, the Rebbe is asking you where you are. So he says, ich bin da, I'm here. So the Rebbe says, I don't see you. He was a little bit too much. He says, Rabbi, ich bin schmutzig. I'm dirty. He was a person in the construction business. So the Rebbe told him, to me, you can come the way To me, you can come the way you are. And just thinking about the yes, of course. But the Rebbe should have said, Bamir bist du gut as David the Beast. The answer is, Miss Nish gut as David the Beast. To me, it has to come as David the Beast. If you make the move, if you go into the Rebbe and you connect to the Rebbe, to the Rebbe's vision, and then Yamut has to come, no matter how you are, every little one with this little thing, if you connect as ear, give the Saich, then we can do it. The famous story with the uh, Bagshamtev, with the Kukuriku. Famous story that Hashem was davening and was in Kippur and he couldn't be pale you sure for the gzela. And there was a farmer, a farmer's child that loved Kukuriku and he came in and he screamed at Kukuriku. And a very simple question. The next day, instead of Hasidim working and well being and doing Hasidis and davening, they should have screamed Kukuriku. It's such a great thing or take the, the word that you like. The answer is a very simple answer. Kukuriku is, 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 is Kukuriku. When you scream Kukuriku by the Barshemta, when the Barshemta is davening around with the Chesidim, the Barshemta is Kukuriku, that goes to the, to the heavens. When you're in the atmosphere of the Barshemta, when, when, when you're together with the Barshemta. And this is exactly, this is the Pshat, that, this is Ich Gibbus Taki Aich, but this is Ich Gibbus Aich, it's connected to Aich. The, winning the Maimodi from the Rebbe, especially the, the Maimodi you said, basic Maimodi from the Rebbe, uh, the Maimodi from Darif Nissen, Tafshan Lama Darif, and the Nesiv Malkabi, Mashed Osso, winning the Maimodi after Gil Mutamus from the Atta Tzava. In many, many Maimodi, in many, many Sikhs, you always see the Rebbe, the, the question How does it start? Does it start from the Maimodi or does it start from the Matta? Does it start because what the Abish gives you, or does it a part of Avedis Atachtainim? And how does it work? And if it's a way attack from one side, it comes from Myra, so then you get a lot. You get a tremendous, a tremendous amount, a tremendous channel of the Dosa. If you start to Lamato, it's very limited, but then it's yours, it permeates you, it's you. So, so, so how does it work? And usually in, 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 in most of the cases, and the end is the end result that the Rebbe says is that the Abish that it starts from the Mato, but it's not because of the Mato. And because the Abisha chose that he accepts and he wants and he's getting his time from the matter. It's not that the matter is, is, is meaning. Of course the matter is meaning, but why is the matter meaning? Not because of the matter. The matter is meaning, what he does is, 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 is important. Why? Because that's why the Abisha chose. And this is exactly, what's the difference? The difference is a very simple thing. If it comes with Sadhu and Mayra, so then you have to do big things. If you're telling me that the reason why it's important is because the Rebbe chose it, because the Abish chose it, so then even a small thing, every little thing that you do, and you do it because the Rebbe chose it, because you connected to the Rebbe, so then you're doing big things. If you can connect as Ich Gib the Saich with every little thing that you do, you're connected to the Rebbe and you're fulfilling and, 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 and you're fulfill, and you're fulfilling this mission. I want to finish with a very, very powerful story that I heard. I heard it from Dr. JP Moore which is an incredible story, just using the platform. 
Dr. J.P. Moore was the rabbis, is the head of the, uh, of the stroke unit in uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. I had the schus to be involved in bringing him to the rabbi and then driving him many times that we came to the rabbi back and forth. This year, Rabbi Yale didn't feel well. And Rabbi Khan asked me if I can find a neurologist for him. So I called up Dr. Moore and I asked Dr. Moore if he can come to Rabbi Yale to evaluate Rabbi Yale. It was during COVID. Dr. Moore was not taking any patients, was not seeing any patients. I started pressuring him, you know, how do I explain to Dr. Moore to go about the Yale? You know, if, uh, uh, how, can, how, can I, how can I explain him? I mean, he's not a rabbi. Anyway, so he understood that he's something important. I wouldn't be asking him as I mean, I told him, Dr. Moore, my mother is sick. My mother had a stroke. I would not ask you to come to see my mother. But Yale, I'm asking you that you should come and see. So he says to me that, I can come and see him, but I need to have scans. And for that, you have to, you have to bring him to the hospital. Then he says to me, why don't you use your mitzvah tanks that you have, and you have the scanner there. As we all know, that the Tafshin Mumbai's, I don't know who organized it, but we've done Mamish and the item that the Rebbe were able to bring the a scanner on a, on a truck and a, a mobile scanner, that the, a, a mobile a, a scanner, a mobile uh, <laughs> machine. And he said, so, uh, so, uh, so he says, you have your, you have your mitzvah tank, you have your way. Anyway, he says, I'll tell you a fascinating story about your mitzvah tanks, he told me. He says to me, I'm a, a goy, he told me the, the Russian, I'm, I'm, I'm an overcaden, I don't know the exact Russian that he used, Presbyterian, whatever. He says, I had a friend, this friend is not around with us anymore. His friend is Dr. Levine, He's a he was a cardiologist, we were very, very close. And we spoke many times about religion. I spoke to him about the Rebbe. I spoke to him about my visits to the Rebbe, et cetera, et cetera. And he told me that he was a Holocaust survivor. He lived in Vienna together with his wife, who also I met. He told me the name, I don't remember the name. He says, during the, in Vienna, we were engaged to each other. The Nazis came in and unfortunately we were separated. But with tremendous miracles, we were connected later back together and we got married and we lived in New York and he was a noted a cardiologist in, in, in one of the hospitals. He says, but the, because of what happened and all the trials and tribulations and the trauma of the war, I gave up my Yiddish right to put away, no more, no, no towers, no film, nothing, nothing religious. He says, I'm walking down the street one day in the Lower East Side. And I met my two of your boys, he called Rabbi Dr. Morris, as he told me, my two of your boys. And they're there, you know, with the mobile, with the mitzvah tanks, they're there. And they tell me, you want to put on film and you want to do this religious act. And I said, I, he said, I respectfully declined. I said, this is not to me, I don't do it. So the boy said, you know what, come inside and drink a cup of coffee. We'll have a cup of coffee together. They came in, they had a cup of coffee, they spoke, and it was very, very nice. He went home, he says, I go home. This Dr. Morris told me. I'm going home, I go home. I'm thinking to myself on the way, it would be very, very interesting to know. I used to have a thousand film. I put it away in the attic. You know, where is it? What, 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 what happened to it? Anyway, he comes home and he's uh, looking for it. He asks his wife for it. And he goes up to the attic and, uh, and, and, and he, he looks at, he finds a thousand film. He brings down the thousand film and he's telling this to Dr. Moore. And he says, and I put on, I wanted to see, how do I look at it? So I put on the thousand film. And then he says, I gave a scream out, they got me. He put on the Talisman film. He accomplished what the, what the what, what, what they wanted. Influencing. Have a good tavach, Yashikoya, for giving me the opportunity to take part in this. The Ebishes of Haufen, that the Rebbe's a Dürfirin, Zayna Zachin, the Rebbe Zichet Dürfirin, and we should all have this source, each one of us, to have a small part in this. A good tavach. Yashikoya, Harav Duchman, those powerful words, the beautiful stories, and his inspiration will definitely take effect that we all recognize that we all are key players in bringing about the Rebbe's call, Ich give das zu Eich. We take a moment to, this, to mention the key goal and, and emphasis of tonight's Fabrengen in addition to the general Israelis of Ish Yisraeli Yazeiru, Lach of Yemer Chazak, is to bring it down the pale mamish. The Rebbe always encourages his Vadius Pi'ilis. It should have a pale mamish. One of the Pale Mamishes of this Fabrengen, this grand international Fabrengen, is for each and every one of us, whoever is participating and for us to spread the word. 
to log on to onemitzvah.org forward slash sign up. And over there, we are all recognizing that we are influencers. It's not about just us taking another mitzvah, which is wonderful. Every mitzvah is, is, is a great accomplishment. But the key is that we encourage and inspire others to become influencers. In no time, the impact, the power of each and every one of us reaching out to as many as we can, and the goal is really as many as we can, to sit down and think, who else can I inspire? Who else can I make? Turn them into an extended yad, extended hand of the Rebbe doing the shlichus, of reaching out and turning on more and more neshamas. This is the time where we all want to invest everything we can going through our lists and encouraging and inspiring that we create teams and pages that will only grow, grow, and expand. Before the end of this Fabrengen, we can already have a, an influence on unimaginable numbers. So take the moment to log in, onemitzvah.org forward slash sign up, and let, let's get the ball rolling so during the Fabrengen, we can see how this keeps on growing. We will now hear a sikh of the Rebbe, Yutas Kislev Tavshim Mem Vav, in which the Rebbe clearly tells us the infinite powers, the ability that lies within each and every one of us. Azafal piva dos is adover mugbal um suyo mumodu du mugbal. Un congor zaina zerigori na manmadim in erech reche de emek hachik tane. Is in em do. In Yoni was is an farbund mit a safe. We misertos bim yuchot bit kupasenu zu. Was it a kerabas ham humeis un tishtush hagulim. Biachod im ze, hot mizah klal, as it gives barru vi slabnu vi starfu hadvore, as it vert nenter su bias meshiach sitkenu. Und damit wir sein der Reben bei mir Lue noch mehr wie bei Schaas Habrio. Eble Teble Smolle, Teble Speres. Wer teichet Nisgalle in Jonim Chadoshim und Protim Chadoshim in Eble Mazea Agashmi, bis in Eble Mazea Achumri, bis wann ich das Wert Ech Nimschach in Chochmis Chizenies, Kime Wuer Bezeher, as von Schnaas Scheich me jeist, und wie der See tatscht das so, as von Schnaas Scheich me jeist, lebe Faschischi, is ot a demut, e nifku ma jonis rabis ut hu, ut he, ut varubis a shamayim niftoch, as a viele ravie, a viele kleine in chokma satero, verba ze echet neites a chokma, be chokma shalohem, אף על פי וזהר עניין, לפי שויז, אין עניינים חיצניים, על כל פונים חיצניים, בירך התלו ומצווה ישראל, ודו סיזר לפנים ישראל. ובמזרתו דווקא בימינו אלו, בדרסינו אלו, ושנסגר לגבעון, אז אין העניין וזה בקמוס, אלא זה הכי קוטן, ובדרך שלפני זה, עוד מהפקמוס קטנו פונדובר גשמי, נגלה כקי נחת ונקי חשיבוס, ודווקא דרך ניטייסת גבעון, איכוכמס חיצייניס עוד מגלה גבעון, אז עם הקמוס הכי קטנו פונגשם, כי פרטוס פננדל גטל תפריבוי חלוקים ופרוטים. Was jeder von sie hat in sich echt kam auf Brote. Und das wird zusammen nach Kirch Achi Adi, was eben nur mir will, kommen das Essen aus dem Litev, wo Litev und Heilung, wie man selbst das Licht erreicht, bei Pastus, Dafke, bei der Seine Heilung, auf einer kleinen Kamus begeschen, kommen nur von Gdeles und Chadoshes, in Tiko und Heilung, Is other fun cum taris artielles lelig with nei oda afal piva dos a camus in beine und tielles cum taris to a ben oda mub nei oda vazizainin in seichlum uvechochma 
Und sie sagen, haben die, was so man pflegt, oder dem Kirch, was sie behalten, in den Kamus Achik Tano. Spending Pesach here together. At our program, we wanted to do a learning component, and we chose to use the curriculums by Tot Alts. I think that the, both renditions, the adult and the children's, are terrific. I think this book makes it relatable in a way that I haven't learned it before, so it's nice to have it laid out clearly. I like having the book because it's fun to learn. I like learning from it and I, and I like new clean books. And Let's take the moment to express our Akkadah Satev on behalf of Shluchim and Anash the world over for the incredible work that uh, this office, Mashiach office, is doing in Mercury Studio 2 in producing resources, material that makes it much more easier and accessible for all of us to teach young and old in Yoni Gula Mashiach and really live with the message. It's also important that Rebbe just told us about the advance of technology and the ability that in a short period of time we can really reach milestones unthinkable in times begun. And th this is an area where every one of us has our, our social network in which through email or WhatsApp or whatever type of media, let's recognize the power of the messages coming through, inspiring, uplifting, encouraging people with the message of Gerula. And it's each and every one of us can use our creativity what works for our people, our circle of, of influence. And it has tremendous, tremendous power to really flood the world with the light, with the Eira Geula, the message of Geula. There's a beautiful letter printed in Igres where the Rebbe is writing to one of the earlier the Shluchim Askarim and Eretz Yisrael in Tavshi Yudalit. And the Rebbe is telling them the urgency of how we need to recognize how now, specifically after the Hashemadis, and he needs a melech ha Mashiach oimed an hakosleinu, the ene mechak el elosium ha avoid ha muteles al deireinu. And relatively, the Rebbe says, it's easier than the avoid of previous generations. And then the Rebbe adds on this line, uba hachlota betekif bazeh. If we really resolve firmly, moitzi gam koiches han alamim shaloi legilui, and you can do much more, you will reveal, untap koiches within you if you only firmly resolve. And the Rebbe adds on that it should be mekuyah bekol echad v'echad, the pizgam of the Baal Shem Tov, that everyone can take out a mitpachas if he means bemuna, if he means it with a muna pshuta, and lave a sayam al mitpachas with, with that a muna. Which means the Rebbe is telling us if we only resolve, yes, we're going to do it. And like the Rebbe calls in the Sikh of Chalchas Nisan, we have to have do with Akshanis of Kshayedev. We can do it. And especially when we, hear, when we have the Kechs of the Rebbe, Ir Gibdas Iber. Do we question if we are able to do it? And the Rebbe says it's only about the Achlat Takifa. We are now privileged to hear from one of the great teachers involved in, the, in, in, the, in the building the curriculum of JLI, which has a studentship of many, many tens of thousands throughout the world, Arav Naftali Silberberg. Agadvach, Agadchedesh, Chaim Lebracha, Chaim Baracha Tadine, and Ochem Shakim Libadwari. Behind the Fabrengen Shadaki Bipel, 
that which is supposed to be pale um, in us and the people who will be mashpia and and ultimately bring Mashiach, which is the bottom line, which we're all looking for. Chavchas <clears throat> Nisan, Tavshin and Aleph. I was a young Bachar at that time here in, um, in Crown Heights in New York. Chavchas Nisan was a Friday. And the Sikha of Chavchas Nisan, the famous Sikha, was, uh, was on Thursday night. It was an unexpected Sikha. What's Chavchas Nisan? Why should there, uh, there it's not, it's not, uh, it's not a Psa Yeme de Pagra, it's not a Yem Skula. And punct, I was that night, that evening, Rebbe went to the oil that day. Rebbe went to the oil then every single, um, every single Monday and Thursday. So the Rebbe went to the oil. And I was, that evening, I was in a house here in Crown Heights by one of the Mishpachas of Anash. I was in the basement. I was doing some sort of task. And as I'm doing what I'm doing, suddenly I hear from upstairs the Rebbe speaking. Um, this mishpacha, they had a, a private hookup line, so they uh, they had called in just for Maidiv, Stamaze. And after Maidiv, the Sikha, the Rebbe started speaking, so I quickly went upstairs and um, I sat down. And I was a 15 year old Bakr at that time, sitting and listening. And um, I, maybe listening is a little bit of an overstatement. Wasn't my, my mind was wandering this place and the other place. And the Sikha lasted, if I remember correctly, I don't know, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And towards, after, after a few minutes, after eight, nine minutes, suddenly, I hop. The Rebbe is screaming about something. I immediately, my ears perk up, and I start listening, and the Rebbe is screaming about Mashiach, Tutat Vasar Kent, with all the different issues and all the words that, uh, that by now we're all familiar with. The Sikha finished, I immediately, I ran off to 770. Where the the sicha, or at least that part of the sicha, the last uh, three minutes of the sicha was playing on a loop, and then the rest of the night was fabricating the entire night in seven seventy and all the Torah and the, the mesifta where I was with our mashpia. But the sicha was always there was like the first eight minutes, which was uh, like the I would say the normal sicha that there was at that time, and then suddenly the rebbe transitions and the rebbe starts talking about mashpia. Years later, I. One day I asked myself, like, what was that transition? What, what, what was actually what, what was the Rebbe talking about in the beginning of the of the Sikha? Most of us don't pay attention. Everyone knows the last three minutes of the Sikha of Khaf What were the first uh, what were the first eight eight minutes of the Sikha? And maybe the list, maybe, maybe those for a few minutes also will give us a clue as to why, why is the Rebbe suddenly getting so excited about Mashiach? What happened on Khaf Khas Nisan, Tafshan and Aleph, that suddenly the Rebbe screamed about Mashiach? What's uh, what's Chav Ches Nisim? So I went back. I learned the Sicha, and it's very interesting. In the Sicha, the Rebbe is talking about the tremendous Maila of Chav Ches Nisim. The Rebbe starts off the Sicha at least in the Mugidika part. The Rebbe starts off talking about how it's, uh, today Chav Ches Nisim is a Yom Zakai, a very special day. Benegay to the Geula. What's so special about Chav Ches Nisim? So the Rebbe explains how the year is a special year. Tafshan and Aleph is a special year. And the Rebbe is Maidech and that. And then the Rebbe talks about how the month is a special month. The month of Nisan. And the day of the month is a special month. Chav Zayin is special. Zach and Chav Ches. And the week is a special week. And the day of the week is a special week. And then in Svira Sa'imer. The day in Svira Sa'imer is a special day in Svira Sa'imer. And after the Rebbe finishes all that. It's such a special day. Sayyid Mitzad the year, and Sayyid Mitzad the month, and Sayyid Mitzad the day of the month, and Sayyid Mitzad the week, and Sayyid Mitzad the day of the week, and Sayyid Mitzad, um, and Sayyid Mitzad the Sira. So then it, the Rebbe says, Bemela. So there's a Tmiya Chigdoila. Bemela, there's this a tremendous wonder. So, Vikumtis, how is it that on such a special day, when Mashiach from every single side, side of the year, side of the month, side of the, everything, so how are you talking? The Mashiach is near. How are you talking? The ten yidden are gathered together. And by us, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's not uh, problematic. The Mashiach shouldn't come today. Shouldn't come tomorrow. Shouldn't come the day after. Which is pretty interesting, because the day Chav Ches Nissen, no one over there before the, the Rebbe walked into the room had any idea that it was special in any which way whatsoever, and suddenly here comes the Rebbe. And the Rebbe tells us, you should know, that today, the day that we're sitting on, even though it seems like a posh, the, a posh the mitzvah, it seems like a simple uh, Thursday, nothing special about it. It's not a chav ches nisim, chav zayin nisim, 
you should know that there is no more opportune and special and 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 propitious day for Mashiach than there is today. And therefore, there's a Himmel Gishrei, because today is so special, Himmel Gishrei, Ha'yitachin Mashiach isn't here, and Ha'yitachin, that we're all so um, Adish, we're all so stoic, and we're, we're cold-blooded when today is the most special day for Mashiach to come. And L'Chayr, at least one of the lessons that we can learn from ourselves from this, is this idea that every day is like this. If Chav Ches Nisim is a special day, that means that every day is a special day. The Rebbe took a day which seemed to be nothing, and the Rebbe showed how it's the most exciting day for Mashiach, and the lesson the Rebbe is trying to teach us is every single day a chassid wakes up and says, today is a Yim Zakai for Mashiach, and today is a day I have to shtudim of Mashiach. And there has to be that, that, that constant freshness that a chassid experiences every single day, that every single day waking up and saying, today is a Yim Zakai, what am I doing today to bring Mashiach? Who am I going to be Mashiach and today in the area of Mashiach? But this obviously raises the question, how, how, how do we go about that? How do we go about, it's already, um, it's 31 years since we heard the, the Sikha of Chav Chas Nisan, and how do we stay fresh? How do we stay, stay fresh with the excitement? There's a story, there was a chassid, okay, let, I mean, let's backtrack a second. In Tavshin Chav Gimel, which was 150 years from the Histalkus of the Alter Rebbe, so the Rebbe, um, decided to publish a sefer called Sefer HaChasidim, which was an album which contained the names and information of about 3,000 Hasidim. This was an initiative which the Friedrich Rebbe had started, um, wanting to create, uh, to publish um, a book, an album with, uh, with the names of all the Hasidim. For whatever reason, it didn't come out in the times of the Friedrich Rebbe. So the Rebbe um, restarted it. And at that time, all the Hasidim, every single one of the Hasidim was asked to fill out a card, which, by the way, just uh, just recently, I think around two years ago, these cards were always kept in the in the Rebbe's library. Just recently, they were um, released with a lot of interesting information about a lot of Hasidim. But every Hasid was asked to send in a card with their basic personal information. And from this, in honor of Chavdal Tevis of that year, this sefer called Sefer Hasidim was published. One of the Hasidim who wrote in a a a card was a Hasid whose name was Rabbi Yaakov Menachem Mendel Sperlin. He's the, the father of the patriarch of the entire Sprung and Mishpacha in Lubavitch today, the different branches of the Sprung and Mishpacha. And he wrote a, a, in, in, in the, um, he filled out the card, and then he also added in another, um, another uh, paper or two with more personal information. And he wrote an interesting story. So he was, he learned from Temchit Mimim. And then in the, early 19, in the early 1920s, after he had already graduated Temchit Mimim, he became a fundraiser for Temchit Mimim. And as he writes it, he was, uh, he did well. He did quite well. He was quite successful in fundraising. And at a certain point in time, it was before Pesach of uh, one of the years in the early 1920s, I think maybe it was 1923, that Rabchat Shefegin sent him off to the city of Yekaterinoslav to raise money. So he arrives in the city of Yekaterinoslav. That's the city where the Rebbe's father, I believe Yitzchak, was there of. And the Rebbe was there also at that time. He actually writes over there that he also heard a, the, Rebbe, the Rebbe giving a shear on a certain topic in, in Yaakov, but he doesn't remember the token of the shear. But um, what he writes is as follows, that uh, Rebbe Yitzhak, uh, Rebbe Yitzhak um, um, invited him to speak and to fundraise in front of the, the main show. And it, yeah, he introduced him, and he said a few words before Rebbe Yitzhak spoke a little before he introduced him. And he said as follows, there's a famous story. It's brought down, part of it is brought down in the in Medi Shabbam, part of it's brought down in the Gemara Mishach the Shabbos about Rebbe Lazar ben Arach. Rebbe Lazar ben Arach was one of the um, five great Talmidim of Rabbi Yechelen Menzake. We're going to be learning about it, uh, about him in Mir Sashem, this upcoming Shabbos in Pirkei Yavis. But Rabbi Yechelen Menzake had five Talmidim, and as Pirkei Yavis, as it's testified in Pirkei Yavis, the greatest of the Talmidim was Rebbe Lazar ben Arach. To the extent that if all the Chachmei Yisrael, all the Chacham were on one side, the Blazer ben Arach was another side of the scale, the Blazer ben Arach would outweigh them all. He was great in, in Nigla. He was also great in Kabbalah. Talks about how the Gemara and Chagiga talks about how he was Deirish and Meister Merkava and how fire came down from heaven. Incredibly great person. Rabbi Yechel Menzake, as we know, he established the Yeshiva in Yavna after the Kurban Habayis, after the second Besamikdash was destroyed. And he installed, Rabbi Yechel ben Zakkai, he installed Rabbi Gamliel to be the Rosh Yeshiva in Yavna. And when he did so, Rabbi Yechel ben Zakkai himself moved to another city called Berer Chayel. And his five Talmidim, 
Rabbi Lazar ben Arach and the other four Talmidim, they went together with Rabbi Yechel Menzake to Berir Chayom. And then Rabbi Yechel Menzake passes away. And Rabbi Lazar ben Arach moved to a city. I don't remember the name of the city. It's a hard, it was a hard name to remember. It was a city which was like a resort city. There was, the way it's described was the waters there were good and the air over there was good. Nice climate. And he was under the impression that his four chaveirim would follow him over there. But they didn't. His four chaveirim, Rav Lazar ben Hurknes, Rav Yeshua, and the others, they went to Yavna. So Rav Lazar ben Arach also thought maybe he should also go to Yavna, but his wife actually discouraged him, and his wife says, eh, that's not Lufi Kalafi Akov, you're greater than them. They should come to you. So Lepoyal, he ended up staying in the city for a while. And then a while later, and what happened was he pushed for God everything that he learned. There was no Tibuk Chaverim. He wasn't together with his Chaverim. He forgot everything that he forgot everything. And a while later, when he went to, to another city and he was asked to read the Torah, and he opens up to the Pasuk, Hachidesh Hazel Lachem, and he couldn't read the word straight. And instead of reading Hachidesh Hazel Lachem, he reads, he read Hachidesh Hoya Libam. Instead of Hachidesh Hachidesh, instead of Haza Hoya, and instead of Lachem, he read Libam. That's the story brought down in the Gemara, brought down in the Medrash. And uh, the obvious moral of the story, the simple, the simple moral of the story, is how important it is, Dibuk and not to go off on your own, to be in a place always which is uh, together with Chavedim, with whom are Dibuk Chavedim Tupla, and being able to um, learn with others. The Rebbe's father. And this is a style which we were familiar with because the Rebbe followed in the style. The Rebbe says, okay, it's a nice story, but what is the, what is the idea that HaChidosh Hazal Lacham turns into HaChidosh HaYaliba? Everything is meduyik. Everything, if that was the mistake that he made, that means that in the words, in the words HaChidosh Hazal Lacham being turned into HaChidosh HaYaliba, in there we have some sort of this... Um, we have an um, understanding of what the deeper problem over here was. So the Rebbe's father explained each one of these words and the way that Abel Ezra Marach changed them is instructive. The first word was hachidosh, which he changed into hachidosh. Hachidosh means when a person becomes deaf. What makes a person become deaf? When you've heard something a lot of times, so you become deaf to it. You stop hearing it. You hear it again, again, again. Instead of hachidosh, instead of becoming deaf to something that we've heard many times, it has to be hachidosh. Hachidosh melashon chadash. It always has to be something which is new to us. The next word, haza, became hoya. What is haza? Haza is something which something you point to, something which is right in front of you. Hoya is something that was. So instead of, again, Rav Lazar Marach took something which was Hazar, something which is here today and relevant right now, and it became Hoya, something that was. And the last word is Libam. Lachem into Libam. The last problem is that sometimes something can be stuck in the heart. It's not something which becomes my union, which I do, but rather it's something which I keep inside of me. And that's instead of being Lachem, Lachem, which is something becomes your union and Gansen. And something which you act upon, it becomes libam, it becomes something which remains in the heart. And the Rebbe's father concluded and he said, he said that the idea of Tem Chetmimim, this was again part of the fundraiser, the, the idea of Tem Chetmimim, it has to be Hachidosh, it has to be Chodosh. Our feeling for Tem Chetmimim has to be new, it has to be Hazah, something which is in front of us, and it has to be Lachem. It can't be something which is in the libam, in the heart, that has to express itself, lepeil, through actually, through giving money. And this expresses, and, and obviously also that goes back to the to the to the pshat that because he went off, Rav Lazar Marach went off to the place where he went instead of staying fresh and new in a way of hachidosh azal lachem, he became hachidosh ayulibam. And this is the this is really the the challenge that we face today, is that how do we stay hachidosh azal lachem? How do we stay away from hachidosh ayulibam? When thirty one years ago we heard this from the rabbi, how do we make sure that it becomes something which is relevant? In other words, at the end of the day, we're talking about the fabrin by being mashpia on others. To be mashpia on others requires, it has to be chayel In order to give chayis, in order to give energy to someone else, 
So that's why Alain, we have to be alive with Inyanam ourselves. We have to live with Mashiach. There has to be something to the extent that when you live with something, when you live with Mashiach, then automatically, whoever you're interacting with, you're talking about it. But the question is, really, where does this life come from? How do we stay alive and make sure that Mashiach remains something which is on the forefront of our consciousness in a way of chayis, in a way of life? You know, the Sikha, which introduced, um, um, which played right before I started speaking, the Rebbe talks over there about the tremendous energy that every single um, one of us has, never brings a muscle from atomic energy, that even in the tiniest little particle, you have atomic energy. So a, a tiny little particle, you figure it's an atom, it's tiny. How does it have energy to be able to, um, how could it be mashpia and others and have an impact? But we know the impact that atomic energy has. But the vart is energy, the vart is highest. There has to be the highest. If you have highest, you can be very small, but you can have a tremendous impact. But where is the highest come from? How do we stay fresh? So this, um, on Friday, on Chav Ches Nisan, as I was, um, I was learning the Hayyim Yom of the day, and we know that the Rebbe says, the Rebbe is Bavarant. Every question that we have, the answer is always, the Rebbe gives it, and there, very often there are many answers in many different places. Um, but the truth is, this the Hayyim Yom of Chav Ches Nisan always, always fascinated me, because it seems to have, it's hard to find the connection between the Hayyim Yom of Chav Ches Nisan and the content of the Sikha. What is the Yimim of Chav Ches Nisan? The Chesidim asked the Alter Rebbe, which Avreda is greater? The Avreda of Avas Hashem or the Avreda of Avas Yisrael? And the Alter Rebbe answered that Avas Hashem and Avas Yisrael, both of them are etched in the Neshama and the Nefesh and the Ruach of every single Yid. However, the Pasuk says, Ahafti Eschem Amar Hashem. The Pasuk says that Hashem loves us Hashem turns to the Kali Yisrael and says, I love you. Avas Yisrael is greater. Because when you have Avas Yisrael, you're loving that which the beloved loves. Hashem loves Yidin. So when you love Yidin, it's not only you're loving Hashem, you're also loving that which Hashem loves. Those who Hashem loves. So the Pashtus, it would seem that what the Rebbe is saying over here, is that um, if you have a, on a scale, love on a scale of one to ten, okay? So if you only love the Eibishtar, so then, you're, then your love is only a seven or eight. But if you pick up your love, I have more love than normally you're going to love the Eibishtar, but you're also going to love Eiv Mashaov, Eiv, then you'll have Avas Yisrael also. So if you have Avas Yisrael, it's a sign you have a greater Avas Hashem. But Eibazei Kumtais, if so, then we're talking here quantitative. Pashen Kamos. How much do I love Hashem? Do I love him enough only to love him, or do I love him more and another in order to love also that who we, those who Hashem loves, which is the Eden? But Lefeda, there's something deeper going on over here. When you love someone, let's speak practice. Because you love someone, it means you, you love their friends also. Love Dafka. I like someone, I love someone. And why do I like them? Because I enjoy the relationship with them. I enjoy what I receive from the relationship. I enjoy what I get from the relationship. That doesn't necessarily extend to liking whom they like. Lo loving the people who that person loves doesn't benefit me. But then there's a different type of ava. And that's an ava, which is an ava of the vehicles. Not that... I remain something separate from the person who I love. And there's me, there's that person. I love them because of the benefit that they bring me. But then there's an Ava, which is the Vekos, which means that I am completely connected and unified and one with that other person. If I'm one with that other person, then automatically I love who that person loves also because we're one. It's Be'echos, it's qualitatively a different level of love. It's a level of love which comes from the Vekos. When you love Hashem on that level, then automatically you love all you. Now that's a, that's about Avis Yisrael. But L'chayda, that's Mamish, also the lesson of Chav Ches Nisan. And what was the Rebbe telling us in the Sikha of Chav Ches Nisan? The Rebbe was telling us, you love me. I'm your Rebbe, you love me. And which Chassid doesn't love the Rebbe? What the Rebbe does for Chassidim. But, and therefore, you're doing what I'm telling you to do. I'm telling you to scream at Masai, you're screaming at Masai. 
But where's the dveikus? Where's the oyev masha of oyev? I want Moshiach. That's 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 my entire mitzvah. The Rebbe says from day one, from Basi Lagani, Tavshin Yudalaf, and even before then, the famous letter that Rebbe writes from the day he went to Cheder, which is a not normal letter that Rebbe writes. Right, he's saying. You know, well, Cheder begins one. Cheder begins when a child was three, four. And the Rebbe is saying from the day he went to Cheder, and even before then, we're talking about when the Rebbe is two, three years old. The Rebbe is already thinking about Mashiach. That's my entire life. Where's the Ayiv Masha'ov Ayiv? If there's the Vekus with the Rebbe, if a Chosid has the Vekus with the Rebbe, then every single day that comes along is a Yim Zakai from Mashiach. Just like by the Rebbe, every day is a Yim Zakai. Chav Ches, listen to the Rebbe screaming, today is the most amazing day by Mashiach. When there's the vehicles with the Rebbe, we're in the same place. Then there isn't any, there isn't Achedosh or Yalimam. We live in a place of Achedosh Hazalachem. We live in a place where every single day, that's our fire, that's our, that's. And we need to stay fresh in that way. We need to, we need to refresh our vehicles with the Rebbe. And if I can suggest. We all know about the importance of learning Taira, the Taira of the Rebbe. We're talking about Vekus. You want Vekus with the Rebbe. We know that with the Rebbe says in Tanya and Peter the, the greatest Vekus, the greatest Yichud there is with the Abish there is to learn Taira. The same thing is also obviously in terms of our Eskashras to the Rebbe, Tzadikim Daimon Lebeiram. The Eskashras is to limit the Taira. So it's important to learn the learn Sichas, and learn Mamarim, and learn the Igris, etc. But at the end of the day, the 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 sikhas, the mamaram, the igris, there's a certain emotional texture that has been removed from them in the publication. There is nothing, there is no substitute for actually listening to the Rebbe, listening to the Rebbe Sikhas, watching the Rebbe Sikhas, and in terms of what we're talking about here today, listening to the Rebbe Sikhas about Mashiach. Watching the Rebbe's sikhs about Mashiach, seeing the Rebbe's raw passion. And there has to be taka, not once and not twice, not something which happened five years ago or 10 years ago, but on a regular basis, a chassid should have a kvias. Today, Baruch Hashem, with the manta, it's accessible, available everywhere on apps and on Chabad.org and Vunar Migate and Jam. Vunar Migate, they're to be found. And specifically the sikhs of the last years, where it's Moli the Gadosh in, in Mashiach. You can't listen to a sikh without being infected with the Rebbe's passion. A day when you a day when you listen to a sikh from the Rebbe, from Tafshun, 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 Nun, Tafshun, Nun, Tafshun, Nun, Tafshun, Nun, Tafshun, Nun, is a different day. You're not living in the same in the same place. You're living with that excitement. You're living with that passion. You're living with that vekus. The oyer is incredible. Are you going to understand? If you want to have something with a beginning and with an end in which... Every single loose end is wrapped up. You learn the Mugadik Sikha. And in Seikho, it's still like. But if you want the oil, if you want the oil, the unfiltered oil, a chassid has to have a kvias in learning the Sikhas of the Rebbe. Uh, sorry, in listening, in listening to the face of the Sikhas, in experiencing that oil, in staying fresh, in Hachidus is Allahem, and then. We live in a day where every day comes along, we say, today is a Yim Zaket during Mashiach, and when we're that way, the Hashpa becomes automatic. Yeah, we need to make also efforts to go out and there must be another Yim, but then the Hashpa becomes automatic, it becomes second nature. Whatever I live with, automatically is something which I am giving over to everyone who I come in contact with, and um, and through that, becoming by being chai and durch dem lahachies, We'll bring about talk of the day. Zanzig the Rebbe and Allah Mata Masarat Fakim. Who you go later? A good work and a good Kedish. Yashikayach, Rabbi Silberberg, for those powerful words. Both idea that we take the passion, we make it our own. We own Masha'ov Ayiv. And the idea of hearing the Rebbe's Teda, it just brings, brings to memory what. Uh, the Marad Asra of the Shechuna of Rav Shvei, tonight is his yard site. And there were two things that were very much consistent with what you were saying now that we saw by him. When, when someone would ask him, Was Machdir Rav Shvei? His auto response was, Atog nentir to Mashiach. The natural given was, Mashiach is imminent. 
And whatever the reality was, his Hatogna and his Hashon entered. That's the reality. And he was also very, very passionate. He always spoke about us in the 70, about the idea that everyone's told him, when we walk the streets. It's very empowering when we hear the Rebbe's words. Today, he would say that you could walk in the streets and mull, and people would talk. It would look modern. Today, people work with different devices. It's a normal, common phenomenon to hear the, to hear the Rebbe's words especially when we're going and coming and we can get distracted with the world out there, the Rebbe lifts us up to the Rebbe's reality. And when then we hear the Rebbe's words, Yemeis HaMashiach Bahem Nimtsoyim Ata, the Rebbe is revealing to us, this is my reality. And the Rebbe is inviting every one of us to live in that reality. Can we imagine what a day would look like when we are living Yemeis HaMashiach Bahem Nimtsoyim Ata? Today is the day Mashiach is coming. If we wake up in the morning, we will wake up earlier. Why? The day I'm going to greet Mashiach, do I want to stay in bed another few minutes? The day I'm going to greet Mashiach, what's my davening going to look like? What's my limud achsidis? It inspires, it empowers, it lifts up every experience of the day and all the pettiness that are so distracting and just creates static in our lives. If we just put that on the balance, does that matter if I know that I'm going to imminently greet Mashiach and the Gerula Shalema? It all fades away. So these words are very, very powerful. Let us all internalize it. You see in each and every way, our lives to see how we can increase both hearing the Rebbe's Teda, learning the Rebbe's Teda, and living with the Rebbe's reality. We will now hear a sikha from Chav Kislev Tavshin Memhei, in which the Rebbe calls our attention. All it takes is one act, and it has a global impact throughout the entire world. Zei zeichi klamenemt in zaman fun golus, um ishtalta rein ine wenig, aber in a ne fun golui, de malufe shelelo, de minne fun getlachkeit, is noch eider sekum de giulo ha mitis va schlemo, is shena to demut, is noch in maime du matze fun gelo, ishtalta rein alle dema sene va vedo seno. Durch sein tagtäglichen Leben stellt er allein Göttlichkeit in Mieten von alle seine Piulis, sei bei Fichu, sei bei Fofcho und sei la Seise oder dem Pläst er sich und lässt es an die alle in Jonim, in welche er es esse oder mit Daber oder mit Chasche. Lest ich es dies auf die, auf welche er es mir spiele, als mir nur noch hier und wir gehen ja so, als sie so unser Gehecht als sie finden, aber sie so legt kommen die Geula Protis und wir schaffen legen sich zusammen, kann man wie kann man Geula Protis, wer sich dem und der Diener Allah hat Psyko, als Hilch in Acher Horev, die Frat noch legt in Psag Dien von Rambam, אז לאילם, ואוס פרמי מדומצה וזמן ומוקר מזול נזי, איזה אחיו, אף היין, אזור זן עצמי שוקול, וכל האילם כולי שוקול. במילא קונר מכריע זי, דולכי נוננצה כמייסר דדיבור עוד המחשובה שלי, נית ודייסר ויל איירן. Aber es ist sehr wichtig, dass er nur ein einzelner Mensch und sagt, ja, da ist es benafsche, sei mein mit dem Matze, zu werden, dass er sich mit dem Wort oder er sich mit dem Wort oder mit dem Meister, aber es kam und kam, wo es ist, dass es mag, sei nach dem Schöne. Passen der Rambam, wo es ab Sack dient, aber das kann Machria sein, als wir bekommen, wo er im Kuli, und bringen als Zolle wie Yeshua und in was besteht das? Die Nikudische Bedauer besteht in der Ruf auf der Einstellung nach der Ruf des Schleilons bei der Piyule Schleil. Wir haben jetzt die Privilege, zu hören von der Rav, der Rabbani Anash, der Schuhe Rabbani Anash, der Maspia und der Teacher zu viele, der Rav, Rav Levi Garelik. L'chaim, l'chaim, chaveirim, l'chaim. 
Chassidim, all our dear friends out there, Agut Avach, Agut Chaydush. First of all, I would like to th- give a big yashikayach to the Me'arginim, for the, the organizers for doing such a, putting together such a program, which definitely did not come easy. We just heard from the Rebbe, the power of the individual and how everyone has to see himself that he can tip the balance of the whole world, every individual. While this program is mostly devoted to the concept of tut alts vasir kent, and I'm sure the most people will basically talk about, as the Rebbe said then, the taches eitzo, to try to figure out what we should do. I'd like to focus a little bit on a little bit of a different angle, with your permission, and respond to some of the questions that I received over the weekend over Chav Chesnissen, and perhaps discuss them here. And I would categorize them basically in two general questions. The first question was, it's already over 30 years that I bespoke the famous Sikha and Mashiach is still not here. Maybe that's what some people claim. Maybe we messed up. Maybe we made a mistake and we should not be doing what we're doing and we have to figure out something else totally. This is the first question. The second one is basically a sequel to the first that maybe we're not the right people for this. And perhaps if others would be doing this, maybe they would do a better job. So I would like to address this area, as the Rebbe said, the power of the individual. And since it's Motzei Shabbos, and there's a famous word by Yidin that Motzei Shabbos, there's a meaning to say a story of the Baal Shem Tev, that it's a Zgula or Parnose, etc. So, and of course, the famous three mistakes in this uh, statement. First of all, it doesn't have to be of the Baal Shem Tev. It could be of any tzaddik. It's not a zgula for Parnas, it's a zgula for Halegut Tzachen, etc. And doesn't have to be Dafka Motzei Shabbos. So I would like to share a Baal Shem that happened with my father, Rabbi Gerelik, and it, it'll fit exactly how the Rebbe spoke over here about the power of the individual. My parents went on shlichus, my father and my mother, they went over 60 years ago to Italy. And they went in the year Tafshin Yutes. It was in the December of 1958. They got to Italy, was in the month of Kislev. They came on the day of Yutes, Kislev. Okay, and that went through Bisholem. All of a sudden, my father realized the first Shabbos with Archim, Hanukkah time, that is not by the Rebbe. He's missing the first Fabrengen. My father, when you took my father away from the Rebbe, is like you take a fish out of the water. When a fish, you take him out of the water, it jumps from Allah's eye. My father, he took him away from 770 and he started going crazy. Was haze, he missed the fabringen of Shabbos Bevor. Came you Chvat, he went berserk. He missed another fabringen of the Rebbe. He told my mother then, in 1959, Those days, he was saying, like saying today, that three times a day, we're going to go to the moon. That's how it sounded then. Who went from, from overseas to the Rebbe? People went uh, once a year, once in three years. Came, put him, and my father couldn't take it anymore. My father decided he must go to the Rebbe, but he doesn't have a penny to his name. So he decided he's going to go for the last days of Pesach. How's he going to go for the last days of Pesach? He doesn't have a penny. The family that actually approached the Rebbe to send Shluchim to Italy was the famous Zippel family. There were four brothers. The oldest was Mr. Carlo Zippel. He's the one that approached the Rebbe. So my father actually approached the youngest, the youngest of the brothers, Eddie. And at Tamazei Meshuggah gemacht, that he should buy him a ticket to go to the Rebbe. He talked about in 59 to buy a ticket to America. And you know what? Mr. Zippel, he fell for it, Eddie. And he bought my father a ticket. So my father standing a few days before Pesach. He's in seventh heaven. He has a ticket in his hand to go to the Rebbe for the last days of Pesach. My father wrote a letter to the Rebbe. The best of Hashem is coming for the last days. And the first days for, to him, it was heaven. He's going to the Rebbe next week. The day that he was going to leave, I think it was the third day of Cholom 
My father was standing downstairs. We lived in an apartment building waiting for the taxi. And uh, he's with his ticket. He's going to the Rebbe. He's the happiest man on earth. As he's waiting for the taxi, the taxi's coming in two minutes. All of a sudden, the mailman shows up. My father saw the mailman go into the building and putting envelopes into the people's boxes. And he saw that he also put an envelope in his box. So my father went over to the box. It's a letter from the Rebbe. And I'm going to share with you this letter right there on the screen. It's a letter that the Rebbe wrote, Yud Beis Nis and Tafshin Yates, where the Rebbe writes as follows, Sholem Uvracha. Uh, I hope you can see it on the screen. Yeah, if you see it. Sholem Uvracha. In response to your letter of Yud Nisan, in which you write, I have over here the original with me, in which you write the Kasal Kadaitach to go away from Milan for the last days of Pesach, says the Rebbe, moving up they're shocked about this, that because this is the first Pesach that you're in, 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 in Italy, this is a time of going out from all the Mitzorim, and it's a opportune time to do things with the Kehile, and the Rebbe goes through over here the importance of the last days of Pesach, and this is the time of um, uh, the of Pesach, is the idea of the Gula Chreina, as I explained the Sikhs. And therefore, the Rebbe ends off in the, um, in the last paragraph, on the Hatzlacha, Agdeilosh, and Nitnaloi, Ulusugosa, Rabbanistichia, that the great Hatzlacha that you were given, in the, um, that you were given um, uh, to be Mephits the Mayones in your Kehila. You'll take advantage of every single day, and especially the last days of Pesach, because the whole idea of, of the last days is of the Moshiach, and especially in suits of the David Malcolm Mishita. My father, <laughs> on the one hand, he became, uh, <laughs> his whole dream went fight. On the other hand, for our family, at least, what we learned from the story is this is Mamish Abal Shemske Maise 100%. The Rebbe should send a letter. This was all went by mail. And the Rebbe foresaw that a minute before my father goes into the taxi, he's going to get this letter. What we learned from this, that there's someone in control. Not only Beruchni, it's Pashat Begashmis. And the Rebbe takes care of every single individual. Therefore, all those that are in despair regarding the current situation, please remember, this is just the Agdama, the, the introduction. Yesh balabais libiros. Everything is under control and we have nothing to be in despair. We're not voden. We have to continue. There's no question about it. We have to continue doing. Aber chas v'shalom to think that there's something which is out of control over here. That's number one. So if that's the case, as after this, a little like Dhamma, I would like to address the first question that I mentioned before. And that is what people are saying, some people are saying, that maybe we messed up. Maybe we made a mistake. We, should, we shouldn't be doing what we're doing. So the Rebbe Baruch Hashem Bavorim Alts. So I would like to quote from another letter that my father received. And that was the first year that he went on Shlichas. Just to give a little uh, background to the story. Um, those days, there were very few uh, shluchim. Very, very few. And my father... And my father had almost no, nobody to, to share with things, to, to discuss things, etc. So anytime a guest showed up was a very big thing. One of the guests who showed up at that time, his name was Rabbi J.J. Hecht. Rabbi J.J. Hecht made a trip from America to Israel. Those days, you couldn't go direct from America to Israel. You had to stop in Europe. So he stopped off in Italy. So my father, Baruch Hashem, had someone who he could uh, share things, discuss things, etc. Another person who my father was very close to at that time, and he also came to Italy, and he actually came to Italy before my parents to discuss things with the Balabatim, and that was Rabbi Yomim Gordetsky. So, seemingly, after they came to Italy, they went back to the Rebbe, 
and they gave regards of from Rabbi Garelli. But it looks like that in the regards, they also mentioned that Rabbi Garelli is very tzubrachim. Why is it tzubrachim? Because he did something. Unfortunately, I don't know what that something is. But my father field felt that he did something wrong. It wasn't the correct thing to do. And perhaps maybe he's not doing the correctly, etc. So my father did not write to the Rebbe. But all of a sudden, on Zayin Adar Shani, my father gets another letter from the Rebbe, where the Rebbe addresses this, um, this issue. And you can see it right there on your screen. And hopefully this will answer the question. If you give a look, the Rebbe starts off, Sholem Vracha, Me'asher Hinni Kabbalas Miftavam. I received your letter. And in addition to the Pash, Pash means Prisha Sholem, the regards from Rabbi Yomin, Rabog. Rabog is Rabbi Yomin Elio Gorodetsky and Rabbi Yanki Yehuda Hecht, and etc. etc. Now comes the Rebbe in the next paragraph. Bevadai le Moisar le Eirere. I am sure that this is superfluous that I even have to mention this. She'ein lipo beruach, that we should not despair. Be'im hoiso be'ovar eze shgiyo banhogo be'eze inyon. If in the past there was maybe a mistake in something, in, in, in any issue. Ukmei elu she'mosru li mehanal. As, for example, what I was told by Rabbi Hecht and Rabbi Berger, that's me. Says the Rebbe, and please take these words. It is a normal thing when people do things. As the Chachamim say, the little translation is that a person does not really get clarity in a halacha unless etc. What's the etc.? The etc. is that Rebbe doesn't want to write it, but the etc. is Elohim Cain Nirshalba. If he stumbles over it, if he makes a mistake, like you say in English, from mistakes you learn. So in Halach, it's also like that, says the Rebbe. And it's normal. A person learns much, much more from his mistakes to know what to do in the future. And the Rebbe adds, you have the schus of rabbim, you have the schus of the rabbim, and the schus of the rabbim is helping you in such a way that the Rebbe is with you wherever you go. And therefore, if somebody even thinks for a moment that he made a mistake and maybe he messed up, the Rebbe disagrees with you. The Rebbe wants you to take what you call a mistake, that you call it an opportunity to be able to perfection what we're doing. No one messed up anything. We're doing a very good job. Not for then, we have to continue going with much more chayas and, and kayach until the job is not finished. But chas v'sholem, that because we look at the past, it should cause a setback. And the Rebbe makes it very clear that the Rabbeim are going along with us we have nothing to worry about. So, Hevre, let's continue. That's as far as the first question is concerned. The second one, which is a little deeper, and the second question, as I mentioned, was that some people think that maybe I'm the wrong person. I'm not uh, I don't have the schos. Uh, and if others would uh, do it, uh, they, they would be do a better job, etc. So for this, there's also another third. My main point of view is to show that the Rebbech and Alt Bavort, any question that anybody may have, we don't have to think up of new aces or new things. The Rebbe told us very clear in all of these issues. And uh, Baruch Hashem, I, I have the great schus that my parents got so many letters from the Rebbe in the first years because they had nobody who to share with. And it's a known thing that if the Rebbe said something to somebody, it's not only for that individual, most things, sometimes it's something dafke for that individual. Most of these things are heroic for everybody. Everybody could learn from this. 
So there's a very famous story. My mother even has it on, I believe she said it once on the gem, but over here you're going to see the actual, the original of it. There was one time that my mother was called to speak in, uh, in a certain city, not far from Milan. There was a city Shailam over there. And my mother went and she spoke. It was Batzlach Rabba. When she finished speaking, there was still some time left. So the people asked my mother to say more stuff. No, no, And my mother's mind went blank. Blank. She couldn't remember a thing. She speaks every Shabbos and she spoke to the girls. And she used to speak to the ladies. Blank. Garnished. You know, so she started singing with them, something, whatever. On her way back to Milan, she was very tzibra. And she wrote a letter to the Rebbe. And she told the Rebbe that she feels that if the Rebbe would have sent somebody else, they would have done a better job. They would stood there and they would have already what to say. And she was standing there as a V. So the Rebbe answered her. And here's the letter. Grad last week, Vashgacha Protis. Many people asked me for a copy of this letter. And here's the letter right there. Okay, this was also written in other ways. And the Rebbe writes as follows. Blessings and greetings to my mother. Now, this was very in English, so it's more for, for the Elam. This is to acknowledge receipt of your letter of the 21st of Adar and also your previous correspondence. May Hashem grant that all the matters about which you write, including your activities in progress, as well as those to be undertaken in the future, should all be crowned with Hatzlacha and in a greater measure than expected or anticipated at first glance. That's the Agdama. Then the Rebbe writes, in the literature of Chsidus, such, acti uh, such activities are classified and explained under two categories, seeding and planting. There is what's called Zriya, and then there is Netiya, right? The difference is, in the case of seeding, as for example, sowing wheat, the fruits take less time to appear than in the case of planting a tree. The reason is because, in the, and the Rebbe explains the basic difference between planting and seeding. Uh, the, the, about the Hittitzos, which is going to happen, which you can read on your own. The main thing which I want to read is the paragraph, the third paragraph that starts with the word in the light of above. I know that Rebbe wrote this to my mother, but I'm going to show how this is Shaykh to every single one of us. The Rebbe writes as follows. In the light of the above, and also in answer to your previous letter, it is surprising to me that you should have any doubt about your ability or the success of your efforts, etc. It would appear as if you have doubts as to whether the one who gave you the assignment had made a wise choice. Now watch how the Rebbe says this. Surely you do not entertain such a thought that the one who sent you may have not made a wise choice. And then the Rebbe continues, though in any case, I would not consider, I would not consider it in any personal way as far as I'm concerned. In other words, the Rebbe doesn't take personal if someone would think that way. However, now comes the good part. However, if you're certain that the one who gave you the assignment has not made a mistake, then you should continue your work with certainty and confidence and with Hashem's help, you will succeed. And the Rebbe finishes off, I trust that you and all yours have observed per Purim in its true and joyous spirit. May Hashem grant that the spirit of Purim will be carried over in all your activities throughout the year. So I am sure that no one needs more explanation than this, where the Rebbe makes it very, very clear that if someone else is the one that gives the assignment, nope. If the Rebbe is the one that gave us the sign and he gave it to us, then he's in total control and we just have to continue doing what we're doing. Yes, we have to. We have to figure out always possible the Chulu. But we always have to look going up every single individual. First of all, L'chaim L'chaim. We were told by our Rabbi that the Neshamis that were part of Temchet Mimim 
were handpicked by the Rabbein. It's not Stamaze, it's not a jungle out there. Every single one who ends up in Temchet Mimim, their Neshamas were handpicked by the Rabbein, that they should be part of the system. There is no question that all the people who come in contact with the Rebbe are handpicked by the Rebbe. We see some people came in contact with the Rebbe, the Gashmi is at least what we see, and others didn't. Those that did come in contact, there is no question that they were during the summer were handpicked. Therefore, no one should entertain for a moment that maybe he's not worthy of the job. Maybe someone else would have done something better. We were all entrusted by the Rebbe to do the most beautiful and important shlichus in history since the creation of the world. Think for a moment. There's Nisham is sitting up there for five and a half thousand years waiting to see how we are going to finish this. Therefore, don't despair. Just hold on a little bit longer because any given moment we will be zeichet to go out of this gulus and the Rebbe will be proud of every single one of us but the Cheche Klal Yisrael. At the same time, every one of Klal Yisrael has an achrayis to bring Moshiach and do everything within his power to get the job done. Everyone has it. The tools are there. Grab them and get to work. There are dozens of programs, which I'm sure throughout the program you will see things that every single individual could do, and no one is exempted. We're all part of this. And when we are all together going to do everything that we can, one way or the other, it makes no difference if we're a chassid, if we're a shliach, if we're a businessman. It makes no difference. We're a yid. We are part of the neshama klolis. We're part of all of this all together. Everyone together, let's get to work. And then we will finally be able to witness the Nisave HaKadosh Baruch Baruch in its full glory. So, L'chaim, L'chaim to everyone. Let's remember, Yesh Balabais Labirazu. He gave us a job. He trusts us with this job. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given it to us. And Be'ezes Hashem, we are going to finish it tonight. And Emir Hashem, tomorrow morning, we'll be able to bring the Karm Tomid in the Beis Amikdash, exactly how the Ramam says in Ilchus Mashiach, that we're going to have Shleimus Ateide of a mitzvah, and we'll be able to do all the 630 mitzvahs. And then we'll be able to see how Nisava Kadesh Baruch Hu Lies Ledira Betachtainim in its full glory. L'chaim, L'chaim. Hagut Avach, Hagut Chaydesh, and of course, Mashiach now. Chaim, Chaim, a great Yashikayach, Rabbi Gorelik, for those powerful, powerful words. The uh, letters speak for themselves, and seeing how invested the Rebbe is to each and every shliach, each and every individual. I believe there was another member of the family, I believe one of the aunts of Rabbi Gorelik, who came as a girl to assist his parents in Shlichus in Milan, also was worried if they matter or if their work is, is recognized. And the Rebbe wrote a beautiful letter, I believe it's printed in the um, gem, in the second volume of the gem book, in which the Rebbe says, most definitely, your work is matters to the Ebishta and the Rebbe adds on the Sagrayim, and surely it means a lot to me, the, the efforts that they're doing. It brings to memory a, a story I once heard from the Baal HaMaisa, Reb Notke Barkan al Vashalem, shared a story that he went by the Rebbe for dollars. He was on his way back to Eretz Yisrael at Nachos Har Chabad, and he's standing in line. And as he passes by the Rebbe, the Rebbe asks him, "If fought in Brazil? And Reb Notke, without hesitating for a second, said, yeah. The Rebbe asked him if he's going to Brazil. He says, yeah, I'm going to Brazil. And the Rebbe gives him a dollar to give it to, 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 give to, to take to Brazil. He walks out of dollars, he calls a travel agent, he says, a change of plans. I was going to go to Arzisol, I'm actually going to Brazil. And he gets a ticket, he goes to Brazil, he has no clue what, when, or where. The Rebbe Gifrek, Oibir Fort in Brazil, 
and the Merevim's Ashailish and Amaskana. He comes to Brazil. It's a lengthy story how he ended up meeting somebody who he knew back from Israel many years ago, also from Riga originally. And there was somebody in the family that Ahmad Islam was gonna, going to marry out. And he spent the night with his Bachar, and he thought it wasn't effective. And a short while later, the Bachar let go of it and actually made, made, made a, a, a Shidduch with a, a wonderful uh, Yiddish girl. And he called Rabbi Barkan to come to him from Kedushin. And Rabbi Natka was fabricating about this experience, but if, if we stop for a moment and reflect, here's a chassid, he's going by the Rebbe, and he has his destiny, he, he has his agenda where he's going to. But that was a secondary agenda. His essence, his, his whole mahus was, I'm a soldier. And the Rebbe asked me, for, I'm going to show boy to Brazil, which means regardless of what I'm at, we may be engaging in our day-to-day -day activities. Our core, core, quint, essential essence is focused on Geula, it's focused on where the Rebbe wants us to be. It's focused on our, on our individual shlichus. And in, in, in the flash of a moment, we say, yeah, I'm ready for Geula. That's my reality, that's my destiny. The, the, the activities tonight on the website onemitzvah.org forward slash sign up is doing wonders. There's, there's constantly a new and new sign ups and it's very inspiring to see um, the the uh, additions, just a few names that just recently, uh, Shmuley Litvish, Shmuley Kreitzis, David Lubavix, Yudin Chama, there's constantly a, 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 a flow of, of new signups. So please, everyone, take the moment and inspire others to do the same. One mitzvah.org forward slash sign up so that we can turn this into a real, real global impact, flooding the world with all of us who are taking charge and, and, and telling the Rebbe aloud, Hineni, we are signing up to your call, to the Rebbe's call to action, and we trust that every word the Rebbe is telling us that we can means that we really, really can. And if we can, we must engage and, and involve ourselves in every moment in implementing and bringing about the Gula. We now have the the villain we're going to see now, a sikh of the Rebbe, Yud Tes Kislev Tov Shin Mem Aleph, where the Rebbe tells us, seize the moment. Now is the time to conquer the world. Kipshut. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Bis wann ist das, wer der Loschen und der Inien, was mir jed, mir jom ad jor, mir jom ad jom und mir nora darf sie jorit. Mit zwei in Paris, der Dämmel gewähren am Mähler, wie Kippo, was das ist der Pastus der Kescher. Was hat das Schach ist, mir jom ad jom, bis er da rettet sich wegen mit zwei mal leid. Er ist aber gewähren der jed, mir jom ad jom, und bis er mit Kevich gewähren Paris,
We now have the great privilege to hear from the Rebbe's Shliach in Salt Lake City, Utah, Harav Benny Tzipel. Agutavach. Agutavach, everybody. Achaim Volivracha. Mustachsilish of Habrain Gikan Ufton, Kamalach Nicholnish Tufton. Should be Zeche to see the Geula Mitzvah Shlema right in the middle of this Habrain in any second right now. Lachaim Volivracha. I'm not from the big speakers. And I was wondering myself how I got myself into this. Not sure that I fit into this group of uh, very inspiring individuals. But I just want to share something. The Rebbe says, I was looking over the Sicha over and over throughout Shabbos last night and today, the Sicha of Chavzai Nisan, Chavches Nisan on Thursday night, which I was privileged to, to be there myself. It was just a very short time before I myself went on on Shlichus. And when the Rebbe says about I remember standing there when the Rebbe was saying these words. And of course, the question that is asked, the Rebbe says that it didn't work. So the Rebbe is turning it over to us. What does it mean that the Rebbe is turning it over to us? If the Rebbe did not do it, so we are going to contemplate that we are going to do it. So one thing that I'd like to share that to me was a tremendous inspiration with myself personally in my shlichas and the way it relates to Moshiach and the way it relates to shlichas in general, but the Oyve Ho'ikr, like the Rebbe said, the shlichas Ho'ikri, le'ochin esatzmai, le'skol ha'elom kule, le'kabalas play Moshiach tzirkeinu. The Gemara says, about Harbil Amatim, I learned a lot from my teachers. I've learned more from my friends. And I've had this, I've had the privilege to share this story before. And to me, it's a very, very impactful story that I'd like to share with everybody tonight. And I think really relates to what this Fabrengen is all about. Many, many years ago, this goes back, I've been on Shlichas now for 30 years. I was able to receive a bracha from the Rebbe by dollars on Chav Vav Adarishen Tovshin the day before Chavzai Nader, Sunday night. Chav Vav Adarishen, we were looking into exploring the possibility of going on Shlichas to Utah. We had written into the Rebbe, we didn't get an answer. And I decided to go by dollars the last moment, Chavav, Sunday night. And the Rebbe was told that this was Tzipol, who was asking the Rebbe for Askom Bracha to travel to, Shli- to travel to Utah to see if a new Chabadas could be open. And we're zeichet to receive a Hatzloch Rabu Mufloga, Sunday night, Chavav, Adarish, and Toshinum Beis, March the 1st of 1992. Many, many years ago, I met a young man who came to my group at the University of Utah, a Jewish student, a Jewish female student brought this young man and he came to my group and introduced himself, asked if he was Jewish and he says, no, he was not Jewish, but his mother was. Just gives an idea a little bit of his background, where he came from. He started coming around regularly, Baruch Hashem today is a chesedish in German, is a lababish in German. But I wanna share a story with you that I think really drills the point home that he shared with me and the impact that it made on me, that it really, really left a very strong impact on me. This young man was a young kid in his early 20s um, from South America. He was here at the University of Utah studying business. And Utah happens to be the Western hub for Delta Airlines, while well, Atlanta is the Eastern hub for Delta. So Lake City is the Western hub for Delta Airlines. This goes back probably in the late 90s, early 2000. And back those days before 9-11 and so on and so forth, it was very common for young people to go work at the airline 
because the job came with a perk that's called travel privileges. Airline representatives get to fly free as long as there are seats available without a reservation. Nowadays, flights are much more full and it's a whole different story. But for a young college student who's not from, it came in very handy. He has flight privileges. And when he's in the mood, he travels. He travels ahead, ahead, across country, across the world. Why not? So we started coming around to Chabad house regularly. And then once in a while, he would come to Chabad house and it'd be like, Rabbi, I've worked too hard. He was working for Delta as a luggage handler. He was one of these guys that throws the bag up on the airplane, not getting tremendous amount of money, but the biggest perk was getting the flight privileges. And he would come to Chabad house and be like, Rabbi, I need a break. I've worked too hard lately. I think I'm going to New York for a few days. I think I'm going to Hawaii for a few days. I'm thinking I'm going here, I'm going there. And he went around. Now this is, again, it's, we're talking late 90s, maybe early 2000. And it was a summer day. And he came to Chabad and he says, Rabbi, I need a break. I'm going to Switzerland for the weekend. He's taking, taking a trip to Europe. Why not? It doesn't cost him anything. He checks the loads of the plane from his computer. He knows which flights are flying half empty. And he gets a flight, first class, like a pirate, you know, lay down flat, have good food, why not? And he went to Switzerland for the weekend, for two, three days, left from here on Thursday, he was coming back on Monday. Came back and he came to see me at Chabad House, rather upset. And this is what he shared with me. And I wanna share it with you and really share with you what an impact it made on me, that story. He was coming back from Europe. He was flying from Zurich to JFK, which is about an eight hour flight. And then JFK to Salt Lake, which is another roughly five hour flight. Pretty long flights. He showed up on a hot, muggy summer day at the Zurich airport and he wanted to be comfortable. How does a young college student fly comfortable in the summer? He came wearing shorts, wearing a tank top, a sleeveless shirt, no socks on his feet, and flip-flops. He shows up to the gate in Zurich and he flashes his Delta employee card, asking for a boarding pass. And the gate agent hands him over a, a, a boarding pass and she puts him, where does she seat him? She gives him a seat, the very, very last row of the airplane, right at the end of the airplane, right where the bathrooms are and the kitchen is, where all the grumpy people get together when they are tired from their flight. So he looks at the boarding pass and he tells the gate agent, he says, wait a second, wait a second, why did you put me in the back of the flight? I know the load of this plane and I know that there are plenty open seats in first class. Why don't you give me a first class seat? I'm entitled to it as a Delta employee. So the gate agent takes one look at him in his face and she says to him, it's because of how you're dressed. Again, how was he dressed? He was dressed in shorts, tank top, no socks and flip flops. He wanted to be comfortable in the summer. And he engages back to the, to the gate agent, to the Delta agent, and he says to her, because of how I am dressed, he says, look around the gate area and look around the passengers around the gate area, look at how, how they're dressed. They're, even, they're, they're wearing even less than I do. So why, what's up with me or why me? And here's the word that she tells him that I'll never forget that reverberate in my, in my mind every day. The gate agent says to him, these are paying passengers. Paying passengers, we have no control over how they show up for a flight. She said to him, you are a company representative. You represent Delta Airlines. And Delta representatives, company representatives are held to a higher standard. So he says back to her, he says, are you saying that if I take a taxi and I go quickly into town and I buy myself a pair of proper slacks, dress pants and a button down shirt and a pair of socks and a pair of shoes, 
I get to fly first class all the way from Zurich to JFK and from JFK to Salt Lake? She says, absolutely, but not the way you're dressed. The way you're dressed is not fit for a company representative. And he told me that when he came, he said he was, he looked at quickly at his watch and it was not to be able to take a taxi, go into town when the plane would start boarding any minute. And he said, he set himself on the airplane in the last row of the plane, flying from Zurich to JFK, eight hours, set, sitting there all uncomfortable under the banner of flying comfortable. And the same from JFK to Salt Lake. Why? Because company representatives are, are held to higher standards. Friends, brothers, sisters, shluchim, anash, anybody that calls him or herself a Lubavitcher, a chassid, a makusher of the Rebbe. I think this day, this day of Chav Ches Nisan, Chav Zayin Chav Ches Nisan, as the Rebbe writes in the Sicha about a specialty of Chav Zayin Nisan, which is Shemin Zay Zoch, Chav Zayin, and Chav Ches is Koyach. And then the Rebbe mentions that he goes into Chav Tes, which is Erev Rosh Chodesh, and then Rosh Chodesh here. This day, 31 years ago, of Chav Ches Nisan, has to achieve a change, as the Rebbe says numerous times about Moshiach, that the first thing we have to change as far as Moshiach comes is our mindset. We cannot be in the mindset of accepting the status quo of the Golos. What does it mean in practical terms? In practical, practical terms, there's people on this call that are a lot wiser than me and Grace Mashpim and Grace Chassidim and big fashtayers and I don't measure myself against it, but I can just tell you the way I look at it. I think until Chavzai Nisan, Tavshi Nun Aleph, I think many of us could have had the imagination of being bystanders, whether it is paying passengers or bystanders, the Rebbe is gonna do this and we're just gonna hop along for the ride. And when the Rebbe is telling us Chav Zayin Nisan and that Sichem, when the Rebbe said Ichlaz Das Ibrat Zuaich, when the Rebbe is telling each and every each and every one of us, you are a company representative. You're not a visitor. You're not part of the audience. You're not even a, you're not even a pain passenger. You are a company representative. You are a makusher to me, to the Rebbe, who together with us undertook the plan to bring. Moshiach to the Dera Shvi, as the Rebbe told us on Yuchvat, Tavshin Yud Aleph, and the Rebbe was reminding each and every one of us that our mindset has to change. We have to regard ourselves talking with anivos and humility and modesty, and we are all nothings, whatever you want. But at the end of the day, we are company representatives, and company representatives are held to higher standards. And when, when everybody calls Chada from Shira delay and everybody can check with their Mashpia and with their Rav and with their mentor, with their, whatever you want, whether it is matters pertaining to Chitas, to Rambam, to, 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 to Davanin, to Tzdok, to Chsidishka, to learning Chsidis, whatever it is, company representatives are held to higher standards. We are the Rebbe's company representatives. And the Rebbe gave us the privilege in that Sicha. When the Rebbe says, I turn it over to you. Don't expect to come on to this plan to bring Mashiach to this world in a passive fashion that I'm going to get it done. And you're just going to come along for the ride. You are going to have to sit in the driver's seat together with me. We are the Rebbe's company representatives and we have to achieve to change the mindset within each and every one of us. And by doing that, we will talk about Zaycha today's gala, so Malkeinu Bereshenu, take it from Yad. L'chaim v'livracha. L'chaim, l'chaim. Yashikeach Godel Rabbi Tzipel, that was a very, very powerful message. That line will definitely go real far, recognizing our true identity as representatives of the Rebbe. Reminds me of a story 
Reb Chaim Gutnik, Ova Shalom from Melbourne, Australia, had a very unique relationship, a unique Kesha with the Rebbe, and was comfortable to speak and ask various questions that wasn't so common for Chassidim to ask. He was once in Yechidis, and he asked the Rebbe whether he should change his hat. He wore an Abonisha hat, a Hamburg hat, and uh, some of his chaverim were, were somewhat getting on his case. He should wear a knech, a Lubavitch identity. He should look, he should look like, a, like, a, like a company representative. And he asked the, the Rebbe whether he should change his hat or not. And this is what the Rebbe answered him. If you would show me any one of the chassidim of all the Rebbeim, the Alter Rebbe, the Mitla Rebbe, all the Rebbeim, I would be able to identify on each chassid of which of the Rabbeim he was a chassid of, and not by looking at his hat. Throughout the generations, there were different hats of, 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 of the chassid and what they wore. And the Rebbe said, I will be able to identify a chassid. Those are chassid from the middle of the Rebbe. This is a chassid from, from the Rebbe Marash, but not by looking at their hats, but rather in was koch What's his passion? What's his koch? And by seeing his koch, oh, this looks like a chassid of the middle of the Rebbe. The Rebbe said, I don't know exactly the Lashem, but this was a contact, the Teichen. One is Gavos Shal Yisrael, was a time of me Yehudi and Jewish identity, Jewish pride. Gavos Shal Yisrael. The Tzveiter Zach, I kochtzich in Mivtoyim. And the Dritter Zach, the Rebbe said, I kochtzich in Mashiach. So uh, Rabbi Gutnik took the opportunity and asked the Rebbe, "Was his kochazich Mashiach Mivtzayim? We know what it looks like. Mivtzayim, you do Mivtzayim, you go out, you put tefillin on it, neshek, whatever it may be. That's kochazich Mivtzayim. What does it mean, kochazich Mashiach? What does it look like?" And the Rebbe answered him that in every machshav diburu meisa is guided and inspired by lahavi limeisa Mashiach, which means weighing a thought. Weighing a a a a dibur a machshava, we have to a uh, We have to ask ourselves, how will this hasten? How will this bring Mashiach closer? And this is what the Rebbe is telling us: what it looks like a company representative, a company representative. The Rebbe is telling us clearly that it means that we are infused in holding our position that the Rebbe handed us and hands to each and every one of us. That we have to see love of the way Mashiach is our goal, our focus, our vision, our passion, and it guides and inspires every thought, word, and action. Can we imagine how our lives will be transformed instantaneously if that is our guide, if that is the, 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 the formula, that is the channel of how we will conclude and make the choices in life. And it's important to recognize that because the Rebbe says, Machshav Adibur means literally, our thoughts cannot be gullus thoughts. And in doing, in, in recognizing that, we have to allow ourselves to be flooded with thoughts that are only the Rebbe's thoughts, only what Teira, Yiddishkeit, Chassidus, and the Rebbe has. Let us take the moment and say, do I want to hear this piece of news? How many times would the Rebbe laugh at people who need to hear the news many times in the day? And today it's, it's inevitable. We can be distracted so many times. Do we want to, or do we want to make a firm resolve? And hearing the Rebbe's voice echo Today, as it was the day the Rebbe said it, tut alz was he can't. Do I have time for this nonsense? Will it make a difference? Will engaging in this activity, this, this piece of news or, or whatever it may be, will this hasten the Rebbe's as galus? Will this be lovely by some Mashiach? It's so simple. The Rebbe gives us the formula. So tonight, amongst all of our chlatis and the inspiration that we're hearing, which is so, so powerful, we all want to make the the... the and Svada should be pe'ilais. In addition, in addition for the for the uh, the campaign that's going now live, the the um, onemitzvah.org. Let's all sign up. Let's see if we can spread the message to as many people as we can, and let's flood the world with being men, having many many company representatives because the Rebbe wants every yid b'dereinu and see the reino at the manigiv and yed yid b'dereinu to be his shliach. We will now hear the Sikha of the Rebbe.
of, and the importance of this day in the calendar. But maybe I'll share something that maybe there's a little more to the story about the Hayyim Yayim Tichlal and Hayyim Yayim Pachas Ches Nisin and its relationship to this day and how it, uh, it actualizes its, itself in my life personally and, uh, and how others may be able to actualize it in their own uh, lives. In a letter from the Rebbe Rayat Nishmat Be'edin to the librarian Alexander Cohen, the Rebbe affirms that he should have received a small book, Hayyem Yayim, and it's a volume as the Rebbe describes it, that establishes that every day says something, and that every day is a day. As a yeh tag is a tag. Amazingly, the letter that's the letter that's written to Alexander Cohn is dated Chaf Chaf Nisan Tav Shin Gimel. So the Rebbe on the day, Chaf Chesnitz and Tav Shin Gimbal, elaborates what the Teichon of Hayyem Yayim was for that day, and that the Sefer Hayyem Yayim establishes as Ayyed the Tag is a Tag. Every day is a day. And he, the Rebbe explains further that the message of Hayyem Yayim is emphasizing that Ahavas Hashem and Ahavas Yisrael are one. And Curiously, if you elaborate in the shiurim of the day of Chas Chas Nisim, you find that it's Sheni Pashas Kedeshim, in which the Pasuk says, All the Teichen of one day Chas Chas Nisim. If you go back to the basis of Ayyim Yayim, Chas Chas Nisim, in fact, you find that it's in a letter from Tuba'av, from Tafresh Tadikei. And the Rebbe relates there the Alter Rebbe's response to Hasidim, questioning whether there were two forms of Ahava Sitral. And uh, they approached the Alter Rebbe, with, uh, and the Mithal Rebbe had argued that it was Ahava Sitral, the Hasidim, that it was Ahava Hashem. And the Alter Rebbe uh, responded that it was Chakuk in every Nishama, Ruach, and Nefesh, in every year, that it was one Ahava, and Ahava Sitral, and Ahava Hashem were one. And the Hasidim left that Favreng, and the Rebbe goes on in the letter to say, they left, that, uh, they left, they left with that message from Dalti Rebbe, and they established Favrengin, that it should be Chakuk, as the Alti Rebbe had said, the Mishama, Ruach, and Nefesh, in each one of them, that this idea that there was one form of Ahav and they were connected one to the other. And the Rebbe concludes there, that once it was engraved in those early, the, 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 the Neshama, Ruach and Nefesh, of those early Hasidim, that it was given over by Yerusha to all the bearers that followed. So no doubt, the Chav Chas Nisim is in fact a great day, as is Chav Tes, and as we're going into Lamed and then into Ir. But every day gives us opportunities. And... Um, and each one of us have different types of opportunities and the types of exposures that we have to, to different people. Now, when we're dealing with individuals, when we're dealing with people, we're dealing with people who are vulnerable. Each one of us is vulnerable. Now, vulnerability for many was determined to be a bad thing. In fact, it's vulnerability that allows us to have to have Ahavas Yisrael, to have true love. Love emerges from complement, complementing each other. And in fact, in Chaim Shmulevitz, the Mir Shashiva, in uh, explaining the bracha, why do we make a bracha that says, thank you, Rabbi Shalom, for creating everybody with Chesreinus? Because in fact, in creating each and every one of us with Chesreinus, we need another person to complement us to make us whole in a sense. And, and for this, we need to have uh, Ahavas Yisrael, Ahavas Reim, and in that way we can be complete. There are very few fields in the world where people experience their Chisreinus more than in medicine. In Mila as well, because of Mayo, the Chisreinus is that there's an Arla, and my job is to Hasaras Arla. But in each case, 
we're, exa- we're experiencing a relationship with another person who's finding themselves in a time of need. And uh, as a physician, you step in and you try to help them navigate their, their time, in them, you help them navigate in their time of need, in their very vulnerable time and place. Needless to say, the last two years found many people in a very vulnerable place. And uh, when people find themselves in a vulnerable place, for the physician, they find opportunity. Halila, that the opportunity should necessarily be in the financial space. The, the opportunity is in the, 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 the richness of helping another person when they find themselves in a place of suffering. And when you can help take somebody out of blood, out of mud, and raise them up, lift them up, to, to be more confident and more positive about what the future holds for them, it's a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous opportunity. I'll share a couple of stories where, uh, personally, I found myself in my own where there were opportunities that being present, being living in the moment, one was able to identify how to help other people in such a way, a way that it emerges from an Ahavas Yisrael. And as the Rebbe taught us what Ahavas Yisrael meant, what, a, what, what being present means. And I'll share a couple of stories as such. So one story is as follows. I um, had the opportunity, I travel a lot to the Griffin, and um, a very kind gentleman offered to give me a ride to the airport. Needless to say, uh, he took me to the wrong airport on an Arab Shabbos, which is not a great, uh, a great position to be when you're uh, having to get back for Hashem, other local Britons. So he gets very, he, he becomes very anxious and very upset by the error. And I, I told him, look, I don't know that what you did is an error. There's some pu'ula that's intended to emerge from this. We'll, we'll see how this plays out. And I have no doubt that there isn't an error here. There's an opportunity here. And so he takes me to the proper airport. I, I, I board a flight, Baruch Hashem, everything is, is, is wonderful. And on the flight, the fellow comes over to me and offers to help me place my, my Miller kit on the, uh, on the overhead bin. You can't see me, but I am vertically challenged. And so any help in getting my bag up top was very, very much appreciated. And we sit there, we happen to sit down next to each other. We start to converse. And it turns out he's not a yid. That emerged quickly. As a chassid of the Rebbe, if you're engaged with somebody, the first thing you want to know is, uh, are they a yid? And what, uh, what can you do to, to help them in terms of fair and mitzvah? But as a matter of course, his, his children were Jewish. So we engaged in our conversation further, and it turns out that he had retired for a very particular purpose, for a very particular reason. He had lost his vision, and in his profession, without clear and accurate vision, he wasn't able to continue working. As it turned out, the disease for which he lost his vision from was for a particular type of cataract that I happen to know, a surgeon who specializes in exactly that type of cataract. So that's number one. I missed the flights. I could help at this uh, 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 another person on, on a flight. And then it emerges that why is he flying to my region? Because his daughter is expecting a child. They ask him, Nunu, if your daughter is expecting a child, she's a Yidina. She needs a male for her son. It tells me, well, you know, if you were giving birth in the city where you're flying to, we would potentially call you to the, be the male. But in fact, she's giving birth in the city where you're coming from, not where you're going. So there's no male there, so what can we do? I looked at him and I said, uh, there's no male. In fact, you and I are leaving from the same city. I just like I'm coming from that city, I can go back to that city. And indeed, three weeks later, three weeks later, I was back there for a birth. Now, when you're, when you're first in that situation, when you're first in that circumstance, time seems to fly by. You're not present in the moment. There's anxiety rising. How am I going to get back home for Shabbos? But in fact, 
there were not only did I need to be on that second flight, that later flight, but that's from the beginning, from the start, that's how it was supposed to be. So being present and being available to somebody who finds themselves in a situation in a vulnerable place and being able to help them out of such a circumstance is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Some of us had, have it every day. Some of us have it more frequently than others. But in a sense, just being present, not being distracted by everything else that's going on around us in a 24-7 news cycle, just like the Yudias in a 24-7 news cycle, there are also opportunities in a 24-7 cycle. And it's our opportunity and job to tap into those moments within that cycle and, and turn them into a tut alt moment. Now, when we think about tut alt, there's doing, there's tutan, and then there's alt. In medicine, there's this idea of, you know, you have to be available, you have to be ready to do. Our goal is to do. But the question is, are, is it alt? Are we doing everything we can, have to do? Are we going above and beyond where we need to be? And the expectation is, as physicians, that you're available uh, whenever patients call to do everything it is that they need. And in fact, throughout coronavirus, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic over the last two years, the cycle of phone calls was unending and trying to be present, myself, my colleagues around the world, Askanim, Yabanim, et cetera, it created unique, unique moments because there were no longer this idea of office hours where people can come to you at very designated times. But every moment became an opportunity. And so, in fact, there is a, to share a story. There was a call one night, one afternoon actually, about a yid who, who was in desperate need of COVID-related care. Why it landed by me, I, I didn't know the yid. I didn't know anybody who knew the yid at the time, but somehow, it landed up as an opportunity for me. Now, why was it my opportunity? Because I answered my phone. Had I declined the call, I didn't recognize the number, it would have been somebody else's opportunity. But by being involved at that moment and hearing the person's vulnerability at that time, we stepped into high gear and we interceded on behalf of the person and on behalf of the family. And we were able to deliver a, a level of care that I believe only emerges when we have a deep, deep Ahavas Yisrael, Ahavas Reim. And ultimately that Ahavas Yisrael and Ahavas Reim should ultimately lead to the ultimate Ahavas Hashem as was promised as is Kokuk in our Nishamas as Hasidim of the Rabbeim. And so just to, to close out, when we're asked to do everything, each one of us has to slow time down for us. We live in such a rapid cycle where so much is happening, so much is happening so fast. But how do you take every minute of every day and make it an opportunity, an opportunity to impact another person another human, all of humanity. And ultimately, when, we're all, when we are synchronized to doing only good, to doing all things that positively impact a person who is in a state of vulnerability, and we complement each other in a most perfect way, then we're data to a gula shleim of amitis. And finally, in a aspect of the Sicha from Chafras Nisan, we see a particular aspect in the way in which the Geula will be revealed. The Rebbe describes whether it is an Arenu Nefloais or Nefloais Arenu. And when it says, Kimetes Kabe Mitzrayim Arenu Nefloais, we're talking about Milamailo Lamata. So we, we beg, we plead that, as the Rebbe said, should it be one, should it be two, should it be three people that are able to do everything in their power to bring Mashiach, but we see all the suffering that people are going through, we see all the challenges that people are going through, so we ask 
that it should be melamayla lamayla and she could be kimei teis from the Italian iran in the flight. Yes, okay, uh, Reb Avi, but we're not letting you go yet. Um, it, we perhaps did not uh, do the proper introduction. We're dealing with a uh, Ingerman who may not carry the badge of being a shliach, a formal position, a leader in, in, in a community, but yet we see the impact and the powerful influence that an individual has, a doctor in a very, very prestigious hospital, John Hopkins, and is infused with the urgency and taking on the responsibility. And those stories are very, very wonderful. Rabbi, if you could share something more, it would be very uh, inspiring for all of us to hear how a, a so-called everyday individual can have such a huge impact in living the awareness of being a shliach of the Rebbe. So the MS is, uh, not to call out on any individual, but the awareness of what it is to be a shliach of the Rebbe, to be part of it, the Rebbe's meisters, um, is a very, uh, was something I first saw up close and personal during medical school, spending many, many a Shabbos in the homes of shluchim, sleeping on couches by shluchim to be able to have a, uh, a proper Shabbos experience during the medical school education. And so uh, to, to identify a couple of shluchim that were most important and vital in being a dug machai of what it means to be ibigigabin to the Rebbe's, to the Rebbe's uh, kach, to the Rebbe's purpose, uh, Rav Chaim Grossbaum, Rav Sivya Teldin, Rav Adam Stein, Label Baumgarten, just to name a few, where uh, we saw, I, I saw and appreciated Vas Tehist, ibigigabin Um One of the... <laughs> One of the aspects of medicine is that there's a, at the end of the line, there's a life on, there's a life in play. There's part of the person's well-being, and it could, it could be a person's well-being from their little toe to Nebuch, the biggest kankai. It could be anything that, that afflict, afflicts them. And so one thing that in medicine is to do a regular Hajj bin Nefesh. Before you go to bed at night, you ask yourself, uh, where did I leave my patients for the day? Did I forget something on behalf of one of my patients? Did I uh, close out the day as it needs to be? And, uh, and frankly, there's a, a pit in the stomach at the end of every day of what responsibility did I take upon myself as it affects another person? And uh, can I go to sleep tonight knowing that I closed out the day and left everybody in a safe place. And so the, the, where you can see that in another framework is where you see the shluchim of the, the Rebbe doing their avayda. There are times where I, I was just last week on a call with the shliach and uh, we were talking about the importance of regulating uh, sleep schedules, that a normal sleep schedule is important to function. I only said that to him because I know what time I get phone calls from him. So seeing his that it really is a, almost a 24-hour cycle that we're living in uh, is something that uh, you know, he sees that he's dealing with Nishamas and therefore he can't sleep. I see that I'm dealing with, with people's physical well-being which ultimately affects the Nishamas and the expression of those Nishamas and that's why I can't sleep. Um, you know, my phone is a very curious device. It's uh, uh, You can actually map the number of phone calls per day and they match the pandemic wave. They overlay perfectly on the pandemic wave. I ask sometimes people, you know, uh, it would be nice if you'd also call to, to maybe learn a sicha, it's also nice to get those phone calls. But the place where I am in, the position I'm in, is such that people need assistance and advice and guidance as, uh, as a physician. And that's the position that I'm in, and that's what I have to answer to. And so many find themselves running away from the position that they're in and the opportunities that they're in. It's more of a question that the devil puts forward to us is to make every day what it is, is to take the opportunities of that day 
And uh, as people have become wont to say in the last two years, if you have lemons, make lemonade. Don't seek to make some other some other thing out of the day that it isn't. Live the day for what it is. Uh, expand the day for what it is, and seek that every day should have opportunities that um, that you can that you can fashion and move forward. And so, uh, you know, there's there's there are many there are many many stories over the last two years of interactions and how relationships among Hasidim. Uh, totally changed trajectories of disease for individuals, for more than individuals. I, I, it calls to mind again, and it was an Arab Shabbos where early in COVID, there were many who were not get were intubated and were not being transitioned to um, other forms of uh, respiratory support. And there was experience from elsewhere in the world that moving to those other forms would be beneficial. But working with Ahavas Yisrael, working among Yidin, Fenalek Reisin, across all colors, shapes, and sizes, literally, er, it was an Erev Shabbos. Somebody got the bug in the ear that they were going to resolve this problem and reached out, Mamish across the country, to identify the device that would help the doctors assist the patient. And this intervention was uh, Pesach time of that year, helped every patient in that hospital that was in that state, and it affected them for, uh, for, for the next month or two months that they were able to implement a change in care. So Sa'ach HaKol is, when the phone rings, somebody needs help, somebody needs assistance, your phone is ringing for a reason. You're being called to a mission, and you're not being called just to do in a halfway form and uh, to let go and to move on, but you're rather you're being called to do everything. And that is a, a mission that every one of us in our own way can implement. Yes, Shekeach, that was really, really beautiful. I can imagine how you would have left us without that. And uh, again, on behalf of Chassidim all over the world, um, it, it's uh, important to recognize Reb Avi was also very instrumental in guiding Moises during the difficult times of COVID and had a tremendous impact on saving many lives. And uh, we wish him continue that slacha, and especially as he's a role model of what it means, what it looks like to being a real full-time shliach of the Rebbe. We're about to conclude the first segment of this international Fabrengen. And just as a, as a wrap up, we're hearing tremendous inspiration and, and uh, guidance and advice from, from every segment, Rabbanim and Shluchim and Anshe Maisa, who are all sharing the idea that we all need to live that identity, own up to the empowerment that the Rebbe is giving us, and really seize the moment, maximize every opportunity and every interaction so that we live in the, in the vision of Lahavi Lameis HaMashiach and recognizing that each and every one of us is a key player. We are now at the finish line. This began the purpose of creation, purpose of existence, and now is the finish line when all the Shleim Musakavon and Briya Sa'ilamis is happening now and coming to its climax, where we're going to see this Galos. The Rebbe will lead us to the Gula Amitiz Vashlema, and the Rebbe wants each and every one of us to take a real active role in making that happen. I want to conclude with a story that I just recently heard in, uh, here in, in Bar Park. And uh, it, it's just a powerful story, what it means living with the Rebbe's words as a, as a reality. This is a Metzius. And the Rebbe tells us it's on us. Geula is happening just to live with that, with perfect and munna through and through. So I, I, I went into a simcha. Someone was sharing a, a story that happened early in the Chafs in Crown Heights. It was a family that not, not Lubavitchers, and they were living down, down on Eastern Parkway. And um, there was a local grocery store there, and it was coming the time when people were leaving Crown Heights. There was violence, there was crime, there was holdups, and um, it was the community was dwindling. And there was a local grocery store not owned by a fellow by the name of Anshul. Anshul was a Pasha to Yid, and he was a uh, Yidavan in the Reim of Huvenshul, and uh, he had a local grocery. What would the grocery look like? It was a small counter. People come in. It wasn't like aisles like today where you have a supermarket, and people walked in and asked for their bread, whatever it was. And he's describing this fellow who's, who's, who was, as a young child living there, is describing the supermarket, this grocery store of Anshul. 
So behind the counter, Anshul had some shelves, and on the shelves were cans of tuna fish, bumblebee tuna fish. He says, you'll soon hear why I'm describing the tuna fish. And uh, one day, Anshul comes into the shul and he announces to the community, I'm closing my grocery. Why? People are leaving, there's a lot of crime, I'm afraid it's time to close. As he announces that he hears a commotion in the shul and people are sharing that the Lubavitch Rebbe doesn't want people to move, leave out of Crown Heights. Anshul is a pusha to eat. He hears the Lubavitch Rebbe doesn't want, I'm gonna ask the Lubavitch Rebbe. He comes and asks for Yechidus to the Rebbe and he asks the Rebbe, should I leave um, Crown Heights? I was planning to move to Staten Island and here there's a lot of crime. I'm afraid there's violence, there's holdups in the neighborhood. I'm very afraid. And the Rebbe told him, don't leave. And the words the Rebbe used was, no one will have any control over you. Anshul took it. As the Rebbe said it, he comes back to shul the next day and he makes an announcement. And he says, my dear friends, change of plans. I am staying here and the grocery will continue to stay open. And it stayed open. A while later, one day someone walks into the grocery and makes a hold up on, on Anshul. He's holding a big gun and he shows him that he has five rounds, five bullets. And Anshul stands there and ignores the fellow. The Rebbe's words are ringing in his ears and he's confident and he ignores the fellow. And the fellow sees that he's not taking him seriously and he shows him I can shoot. And he pulled the trigger. Once, twice, three times, four times, Anshul is standing there stubborn, ignoring him. And a German shepherd dog that was patrolling outside came in, heard the commotion and took care of the fellow. And this person was telling me the story. He says, I and the entire community walked into the grocery and we all witnessed five cans of bumblebee tuna fish dripping with oil of the five bullet shots and Anshul walked out without a scratch. And the Munib shoot in the Rebbe's words gave him the confidence to stand up against all that looks in our eyes so real. But what was more real to him was the words that Rebbe said, and as we go on through our day-to-day -day activities and there are so many things that look real, their, their voice and their sound is very, very, very strong, but yet there's something deeper, something so, so real to us that nothing, nothing can get in its way. Our confidence, our emuna betachen, davar echad midvarav leishav reikam, that one word the Rebbe ever said did, did not come through to its fullest. Everything the Rebbe said came to its fullest extent of clarity the way the Rebbe said it. And so too now, if the Rebbe is telling us it's here, and the Rebbe is telling us we're going to make it happen, and the Rebbe tells us each and every one of us carries the responsibility and the opportunity and the schus to make, bring it a moment sooner, we are sure and confident that that will be the guiding direction in our lives, the empowerment to make us all for ourselves, for our communities, whether we can get them all to join the one mitzvah campaign or what, in any way possible, increasing our shiurim in Yanigula Mashiach, hearing the Rebbe's words, sharing the Rebbe's message, utilizing all of our opportunity of communication, our social media for the exclusive reason that he wished to create it. It was only created that today we can flood the world with that message, inspiring, uplifting, and preparing every it. We should see the Rebbe's Galos before the end of this Fabrengen, and we should celebrate Rosh Chedesh Ian, the Beis Hamigdash, Hashlishi, Shibana, Bemheir of Yamenu, Takef, Umiyad, Mamish. We'll now hear the Sikh of Chabbez, Elul, Tuf, Shin, Nun, of our empowerment to transform the world. Meisi findruf der alte Rebbe noch klarer, hat das Wert verlangt, und es soll machen, wie die Welt im Isad Asma, Eder Ayit, Arbeit Safir. Es ist auch dämmert wie ein Feld, was ein Feld hat, und wir die größten Möglichkeiten, ob die Möglichkeiten in ein Feld sein behalten, und mit Abhoben soll kommen ein Mensch, und der Mensch soll dort reinlegen, Kernblech von Tuvu und Peris. Das Dämmel davon ist wachsen. Weiß, Chito, Seele, Vergeben, Seele, Verimen. Weiß, Schämen und Dwarf. 
alle gute Pede, sie folgen, das schwingt auf der Nacht, der Lache, der Erdes, wie man nur tät sie lachen, und welches hängt auf den Menschen zu leben, als darf er da kommen, zu dem Mosin, was speist dem Gedeiden nicht um, so seiner gesunden Schomme, einer gesunden Guf, und dann gesunde Sachen, einer gesunden Neffen, wo das verbunden mit dem Emsen gesund, wo das verbunden mit der Aufführung, die der Anweisung von der Terror, und man darf sich nicht schrecken, was ich rede, so dass er eine große Arbeit, bei mir ich nicht keine leichte Arbeit, eine Fieber machen von einem Feld, wie sie wird als Pitero angerufen, beschämt, so, wie baut er der Nerven, die findet sich im Feld. Ich habe verstanden, dass wir gleich auf die Alte, was gefunden sich im Feld. Bis wann nicht, weil Lach es kann, wie kann man auf Menschen, was gefunden sich im Feld. Aber das ist doch ein Bichedischer Lach, mit dem Gott sich die Tage in sich, ein spezielles Gull und, 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 und Kirches. Was machen noch leichter für jeden der Arbeit? Mit, mit, mit keinem sein, sein Schlichus. Ein Fieber machen von der Feld soll das werden Adira. Und für wem in Adira? Nicht nur für Adira, für Stammer Menschen. Und nicht nur für Stammer jeden. Nur für die Adira, für die Mellach, Malch am Loch im Akkordisch Boruch. Und er macht noch leichter die Arbeit. here together at our program we wanted to do a learning component and we chose to use the curriculums by Tut Alts. I think that the both run editions, the adult and the children's, are terrific. I think this book makes it relatable in a way that I haven't learned it before, so it's nice to have it laid out clearly. I like having the book because it's fun to learn. I like learning from it and I and I like new clean books and As we conclude the first segment that was hosted at the East Coast, we take again the opportunity to thank the host of this grand Fabrengen, the Mashiach Office of Suite 302, and all the amazing work they do that in, in, in empowers and allows for Shluchim and Anash all over the world to really live with the Tut Alts, live within the Yoni Gula Mashiach. And we wish them tremendous brach and atzlocha in their monumental work preparing the world for the Gula Amitiz Vashlema Tekev Umiyad Mamish. We now have the great schus of turning over the host of the continuation of the Fabrengen all the way to the West Coast, one of the Rebbe Shluchem to Sherman Oaks, California, Harav Yossi Lipsker. Agutavach and Agut Mechaydish. <laughs> 